Hey, happy June, everyone. That means we get to start listening to the summer playlist.
talks about people going bird watching, but no, no one ever seems to talk about birds going people watching. Really makes you think. This speaks volume to me.
y'all doing today? I hope you're doing well. Hope your day's been good to you so far. It is... Wednesday? I was about to say it's Monday, but it's definitely not Monday. It's Wednesday. Okay, I, I double-checked. <laughs> it is Wednesday, June 1st, 2022. Uh, hope you're all enjoying uh, the first day uh, of Pride Month. I hope it's been uh, a good time for you. Uh, and if you're... Uh, well, that's $100. Okay. I was about to say, <laughs> you have to pay me. But I mean, I guess you beat me to the punch. Thank you, January, for that. <laughs> oh, it's been a it's been a wet, gray day here, but it's been cool at least. So uh, I've been able to have the window open and watch some uh, watch some birds and some rabbits and stuff while I got some other things done this morning. So that was nice. Got to, got to have a little bit of a chat with my partner. I uh, got to pet my cat. I uh, got to make an omelette. Um, you know, other stuff. So, feeling pretty good about today. Hope you found something to feel good about today as well. Uh, thank you for all of the, the subs and the tips and all of that that we had at the start of the stream during the intro. And thank you as well uh, to Doc, MDCT, uh, for the host during our intro. I uh, don't know if you're still sticking around, but I appreciate it very much, bud. How was the omelet? Uh, it was good. It was very good. It was uh, nothing complicated or nothing. It was just like a, you know, like a diner-style omelet with a uh, bit of cheese and a bit of, bit of roast beef in it. Nothing, nothing like fancy or complex or nothing. I wasn't in the mood for fancy or complex. I just wanted to eat eggs. <laughs> While that you've been subbed for two years? Imagine how I feel doing this for over two years. My god. It's been a real good time and I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully more. Thank you, January, again for the tip. Happy Pride, everybody. The very generous $100 tip. It is very, very greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, exceedingly generous of you. <laughs> Here I was, about to say jokingly, like, well, I guess first of all, thank you, Honest Tom's Discount Happy Beef. Happy Pride Month, Gamers Pride Bob. <laughs> much appreciated. Here I was, just about to be like, oh uh, yeah, and if you're cisgender and straight, you gotta give me your money. It's it's the month for doing that. And someone comes out here and makes me eat my fucking words, and now I feel bad for wanting to say that as a joke. <laughs> Five full months. Also, if you combine the two new professors from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you just get Grug from the cruise. Don't believe me? Do a side by side. I don't know what that means. In the sense that I I saw the new Pokemon stuff, but I don't know anything about the Crudes. And I think I'm okay with keeping it that way. <laughs> Cosmogon for the sub, much appreciated. It's very funny how the new Pokemon legendaries are like, um, uh, like a, a bird of paradise motorcycle, uh, and then that one robot furry that everyone likes, but they made it shaped like a penis by accident. That, that certainly is some choices. <laughs> I do like the pig, though. I do like the pig. Cancel Trek Thursday, let's do Crudes Thursday. We can, we can bring that up with the rest of the gang, Adrian. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> I did like the pig, though. Uh, it's it's hard to sell me on a Pokemon game nowadays because I know I know full well in my heart it's a genre that I'm not super big on anymore and uh, it's gonna cost me a hundred dollars so it's just like I can't I can't really get myself super interested in it but the, the co-op stuff does seem cute it does seem neat let's do pride fundraiser with peach this month I want to yeah 
I had I think I had mentioned that once or twice on a stream that I was I was hoping to do that this month. I'll we'll have to see what date works for that because it's a uh, maybe a little bit of a busy month, but I would like to. It'd be a fun time to do that. Uh Hang on a second, it's raining a little bit outside. I got to make sure that's not coming in. There we go. But yeah, I'm not here uh, for Peej today. And I'm not here for Pokemon today. Uh, we're here to play Citizen Sleeper, which is a uh, very cool little game uh, that I haven't had the chance to check out yet. And I figured, hey, why not stream it? Thank you, Frankie, for the 25 month resub. Happy Pride clap, 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 clap. Okay, boss, right away, boss. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around, Frankie. I hope you're having yourself a wonderful day so far. Uh, there are three birds sitting on a power line outside my window just fucking staring at me. And I'm scared. Anyways, Citizen Sleeper uh, is a really cool looking uh, sci-fi, uh, like, text-heavy RPG about, you know, uh trying to survive uh, in the ruins of interstellar capitalism, uh, understanding, you know, what it means to be a person when you're seen as property, uh, reaching out to other people, you know, who are all dealing with all their own struggles and things like that. Uh, and also something about, like, fungus and, like, a vending machine or something like that. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's It's a game I've had my eyes on for... A little while now, and so I'm very, very excited to, uh, to dive into that. Uh, before we start, you know, the usual stuff, welcome to the stream. Uh, my name is Holly, and I'm... Gay. If you haven't followed already, make sure you hit that follow button if you'd like, uh, updates on when we go live and things like that. Uh, it don't cost you a dime. Uh, but if you do got a dime... And you want to chuck that over my way. You've got options. You can always subscribe to the channel. Reoccurring monthly fee that gets you some funny little emotes. You can use here uh, and all across uh, Twitch. And on Discord if you join my server and link your Twitch and Discord accounts. Uh, you can give gift subs out to the rest of the community. You can give bits. That's money that gets added onto my monthly Twitch payout. Uh, you can tip directly through Streamlabs and PayPal. That's money that goes to my wallet uh, right away, essentially. Uh, any and all financial support uh, is very greatly appreciated. This is my job. This is my main source of income. Uh, and there's never any obligation uh, to give me your money. Don't ever feel like you have to. There's never any pressure to in order to, like, you know, be a member of the community or enjoy the streams or anything like that. But, you know, if you like what we're doing here, if you enjoy the streams or any other creative projects I'm a part of, uh, if they've ever brought you joy or anything like that, and you have the means, uh, the very generous support of viewers like you is why I'm able to do this and other creative things uh, as often as I do, while still being able to, like, keep a roof over my head and eat food and things like that. So thank you all very much for that. The streams would not be what they are uh, without the support of viewers like you. Uh, other than that, you know, uh, review the rules uh, if you haven't in a while or if you're new. Uh, the streams are intended for mature audiences. I would consider that to be uh, 16 or over the age of 16, ideally. Thank you, Jill Jig, for that 10 month resub. Exceedingly generous of you. Very, very much appreciated. Uh, and thank you to my sister for the Happy $20. Pride. I found out today that I'm getting a promotion, so here are many dimes. Oh, yeah. Let's fucking go. You love to hear it. <laughs> Congratulations! Happy Pride Month, Lechonk is a gay icon, I will write it into law. <laughs> Thank you, Pudding Spooky, for the tip, much appreciated. I misheard that at first as LeChuck, like the pirate from, uh... <laughs> from I Monkey did not Island? I feel obligated or pressured to give you this three dollars. I just felt bad about you not having a roof. <laughs> I was only half paying attention. <laughs> It's true, Jeff Bezos comes and takes my roof away unless people subscribe to my channel. <laughs> it's, it's tough work, but someone's got to do it. Thank you for the tip, much appreciated. And thank you, the gay Avery, for the tip. Happy first gay of gay month, 2020 gay. Glad you're having a good day, Holly. I am having a good gay, thank you. Thank you for the tip, I appreciate it. What the fuck was I saying? Oh yeah, read the rules, follow the rules, be nice please. Uh, if you're not, 
I'll have to ban you, and I only like banning people uh, if they're assholes, so don't make me do it. <laughs> Unless you are an asshole, in which case, gladly, I suppose, but that's beside the point. Anyhow. <laughs> uh, yeah. And hey, other ways you can support the stream, what don't cost you a dime, you know, you can always share tweets about the stream. Thank you, Affable Giraffe, for the 25 months. Good golly. I work at a zoo and they added some tiny little golden lion tamarinds to one of the aviaries. <gasps> like Terry's just a pair of tiny monkeys walking around. Please look up golden lion tamarinds, I'm begging Okay, you. I'm copying this right now. I'm copying this right now. I don't remember what else I was saying. It's not important. I'm copying this right now. I'm looking at golden lion tamarinds. Oh my god, these guys are adorable. Look at uh, Whoa. Whoa. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on! Look at him! It's just a little guy! It's just a type of little guy! <laughs> That's really good. Anyways, you know, you can share the, the stream around, tell a friend, something like that. Word of mouth is always real handy. Uh, and, of course, you know, if you got the time, you're interested in what we're doing, tuning on in, having a good time, that support in its own way. So thanks for taking time out of your busy day to spend it here with us. I think that's enough preamble. I think that's enough uh, running our running our running our engine without going anywhere. How's about we start playing? And if you'll give me just a moment, I'm booting up the game, uh, and hopefully it won't be too loud or anything. Did I? I did. Okay. I thought I was in the wrong source for a second. Uh, this is my first time booting it up, so I guess this is the potential volume warning. We'll see. We certainly can't continue, so, uh, that's a new game. I'm feeling number one today. So we can choose from, uh, one of three different character classes. We've got, uh, the Machinist. A Machinist repairs and modifies automated systems used in industrial resource extraction. Sleepers assigned to Machinist work are usually diligent, careful, and structured people. Chance to gain random scrap item on engineer actions. We've got a plus one to engineering and a minus one to engage. We've got operator. An operator works with drones and high precision remote machines to perform complex tasks from a distance. Sleepers assigned to operator work are usually cerebral and precise people. Uh, we have a chance to gain cryo on interface actions. We have a plus one to interface and a minus one to endure. We also have Extractor. Extractors work on resource extraction, often in hard vacuum environments. Sleepers assigned to extractor work are often confident, self-sufficient, and have a high level of endurance. Uh, we ha that starts with photosynthetic skin, which gives you an action called sunbathing, which lets you regain energy at home. You get a plus one to endure, uh, and a minus one to intuit. So who are we going to pick? I'm going to make a poll. We're going to have a, a minute on the poll. Uh, let's pick our sleeper. We have machinist, operator, or extractor. I'll let the poll go for about a minute. Let your voice be heard. Cast your vote. Now. I 
I don't particularly have a preference, uh, which is why I thought it would be cool to leave that up to a vote. For my first run, I figured it could be fun to do any of them. That is a very even vote. What the fuck? Damn. <laughs> the people, they have no preference tonight. Wild. And it looks like squeaking ahead by just a couple of votes, uh, we will be playing as an operator. We go. So we add a plus one to working with digital interfaces, uh, and a minus one to using strength or strength of will. Also, let me know how the audio is. Uh, if it's uh, too quiet or too loud, I can I can adjust stuff as needed. But uh, at least on my end, it seems to be okay. Let me know how it sounds to you. thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect. The delay between thinking and feeling. Between wanting to act and acting. Minor. Almost imperceptible. But always present. It's at its worst when waking. When yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it felt like to be real. To be a person to be in a body that was indisputably yours. Let's think of that body. A leap into a cold lake on a hot day. The sting of blood welling from a fresh wound. The friction of a fingertip. All of a sudden, the memories are closer than you thought, blurring as you approach. Until you can't tell one from the other. The cold slips in, behind and around you, and the sensations fade out of reach. Perhaps you should be thankful for the dulled nature of this new body, given your current circumstances. The walls of the container feel immediately present. Cold. Hard. At your back and face cramping your limbs. You resist the desire to stretch, knowing that the claustrophobia comes next, and retreat a little from your central nervous system. It isn't painful. Not like you used to know pain, at least. In emergency mode, pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease, a reminder that harm is imminent. There is no insistent throb, no trembling nerves. Just a warning, delivered with the banal quality of a digital notification. Right now, there are thousands of them. I think all things considered, it'd probably be a good idea to uh, remember the plan. You mostly remember that it wasn't a good plan, but then your options were limited. And once you got the itch to get out, by any means possible, it was either that plan, or something much worse. It was at least simple. Collapse the shaft, drift away in the chaos, slip into cargo processing, seal yourselves into containers, then just hope the freighter left before you were missed. Some were lost in the shaft. Others never found the meeting point. Only a few made it to the containers. Ah, so this wasn't just breaking ourselves out. This was breaking others out. But the freighter, as far as you know, left. That feels like enough. Enough to know you might no longer be on that grim and heartless rock. Even if in the airless hold of a freighter, 
You might freeze solid long before you reached any destination. Maybe we should try to rest. But you are restless. It has been a long time since you left. Surely weeks. Maybe months. You are dully aware of damage to your legs, your right arm. You have been reserving energy as much as possible. But even then, your body has shut down many of its systems to protect you. You have spent much of that time asleep, knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It is time to sleep again, to nudge this false body into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind, and once again, recoil into a dream of when you were once a person. Time passes. The cold creeps further in. You feel something. Warmth. Not true warmth, but the, indica the indication of its presence. Your joints release from their rigor. Sound, too. Everywhere. Screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. Then, light. White as the cold. Then softer and softer. Until in a haze of dirty yellow, a figure appears. You are out. Here we are. Uh, how's the volume, by the way, in comparison to me just talking during like that little musical bit? Was that was that okay? That wasn't like like too loud or nothing. Audio balance is great. All right, cool, cool, cool. I was I was I was worried it might be overpowering or something, but I'm glad it, people seem to agree it's good. Because I, I, I like the sounds in this game. I want to hear them. <laughs> so we've got our one option to go uh, go to Dragos. I'm not sure if that's a person or an area. Let's see. It's a person. A pragmatic and private salvager. It has been a few hours since Dragos pulled you from the container. You sit huddled in a corner of his scrapyard swaddled in the reflective folds of a mylar blanket. You are slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life, and you stare at the ornately curving element of an improvised heater. You are surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of ships, some corroded beyond recognition, others still carrying glassy wounds along their edges where a plasma arc sliced them apart. As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. So, sleeper, y'all thawed out yet? Almost. Never seen one of you come in like this. The new frames must have been better, must have better per, per, pers Oh, sorry, I thought that was preservation. I was misreading that. Never seen one of you come in like this. New frames must have better perseverance in Sub-Zero Vac. Seems more than a few of you froze solid to hull plates or inside outer locks in my time. They weren't so lucky. Dragos comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech, his headset with its glinting eyes, the mark of a drone operator. On his shoulder, one of his symbiotically linked drones perches, its irising eye locking you with an unflinching stare. Last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago. Well, they didn't last long. You struggle to read his expression beneath the tech, but he seems lost in memory for a moment. Or perhaps he's just figuring out what to do with you. What happened to them? He ignores your question. I won't ask what led you to do it, to sell yourself to a corporation. And I suppose you know you can't go back. Your old body, that's theirs now, and you're just... software. A rogue emulation illegally possessing corporate property. You nod along. You remember biometrically signing the forms, the cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cells. 
promise of a life off-world. But as you do, you get the now familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. These are things you know, not things you feel. You are no longer that person. You are an offshoot. A copy. What you won't know is what's ahead. At least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it. That body of yours is falling apart. The same for any sleeper who makes it out. SNR wants to protect their property. If they can't keep hold of you, well, then no one can. You remember that too, or at least rumors of it from the other sleepers. Planned obsolescence, a built in dependence on the regularly administered supplements that were part of your routine. Stop taking them, and your body begins to shut down, separate from your emulated mind. How long has it been? How long do you have? But for now, sleeper, you're one of the lucky ones. Dragos glances up and away towards the glassy dome of the yard. The eye is the best place you can be right now. The eye? The station. You'll see soon enough. Dragos impatiently shifts his weight. Oh, look, I've got things to be getting on with. He trails off. There's an old freighter container I've been using as storage out in the stacks. We haven't been pulling in much valuable scrap these days, so you're welcome to it. Something wells up inside of you. Emotion. Fatigue. You shakily get to your feet. And nod. Alright, you head on up there. You look like you need some rest. And with that, Drago stalks back into the wrecks, his drones already converging on a rusting hulk, plasma flashes silhouetting his spindly figure as he returns to work. Welcome to Erlin's Eye. Life on the Eye runs in cycles, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas of the station, and perform actions. At the end of each cycle, you need to head to your current home to rest. Resting will move time forward on the station. Head to the empty container location to rest and end the cycle for now. Select locations by clicking on their icon. Well, let's go home. Very good, inspired by modern day sci-fi stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a neat sort of concept. Uh, you know, the sort of extension of, of you know, property and capital and, like, businesses levering, leveraging that, like, being applied in a much more direct and literal way to people. I'm, I'm really interested to see where it goes with this. All cycles need to end, rest, and prepare for the next one. Container. Four steel walls. You wake, curled up in the corner of the container, and begin slowly assembling the world around you. After all this time, you still find this body, the one you wake in now, strange and disjointed. Its message is readable, but somehow wrong. You sit up, pulling the mylar blanket close against the cold. Here you are, on this ruined station, millions of miles from anyone you know. Are you still in the system? Did any of the others make it out? It's impossible to know. After all this, what matters? Maybe escape? Maybe getting answers? Maybe building a life? Right now, I'm feeling building a life. Maybe you did get lucky finding yourself here. Maybe here, on the edge of everything, there's a life for you to build. But before you can build anything, you'll need to learn to survive. Maybe if you can do that, you can make a life for yourself. Dragos has left a few comforts in the container. The Mylar blanket, the bedroll you slept on, a canister of water, a makeshift electric stove, and some faded sachet of some desiccated powder. 
You thumb the power stud of the stove and begin to boil the water. The contents of the sachet smell like damp wood, and you sprinkle them into the liquid. As the pungent smell washes over you, images of your restless sleep come back to you. A ring, like the station, but skeletal and ghostly. A web of threads pulling at your skin. A constellation of bright, polygonal shapes, like angular suns burning into your mind. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images, and it is long after you finish drinking that they begin to fade. You tidy away the stove as best you can, and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. Condition, action dice, and energy. Number one, condition. So here's some of the main mechanics of this video game. Your condition represents the current state of your artificial body. It depletes by one segment of each cycle, but can also be damaged by violence, injury, or lack of food. If your condition bar empties, you will suffer a breakdown. We're a robot? Yeah, the intro of the game tells us that we, uh, we once were a person and we signed a deal for a life off-world that ended up with us uploading our consciousness uh, into a machine. You'll have to figure out how to recover your condition now that you no longer have access to corporate pharmaceuticals that were keeping you alive. It's, uh, it, it sounds like it's maybe a little bit of like a... Like a, like a Blade Runner re replicant type situation where it's like kind of organic and also kind of kind of robotic at the same time. Number two, action dice. At the start of each cycle, you roll your action dice. We uh, had some bad rolls and then also a four from the looks of it. These dice can be used to perform actions on the station. The number of dice rolled is based on your current condition. The worse your condition, the fewer dice you have. Once you have used your dice, you cannot take any further actions and must rest to recover them, ending the current cycle. Number three, energy. You also need to eat to survive. This is represented by your energy bar. You can refill your energy bar by eating, but at first you'll have to find somewhere to get food. Your energy depletes by two segments each cycle. If it becomes empty, you will be starving. When starving, your condition will also deplete at a double rate per cycle. So we need food, we need some way to keep ourselves alive, uh, and we need good rolls. <laughs> so here's hoping. Uh, we have zero cryo. Cryptocurrency stored in air-walled sticks of memory known as chits. This is, this is the bad future. <laughs> Sorry to tell everyone, but the game where we're, uh, you know, living in a planned obsolescence corporate robot trying to escape to get our freedom, uh, is also the future where crypto exists. Dragos has stood in the corridor when you close up the container. He's still wearing his headset, and in the harsh light of the corridor, you realize it is implanted. A drone sits on his shoulder, its cache of sensor eyes rapidly irising. How are you feeling? Okay. The drone chirps. Good to hear. You notice that beneath the operator's rig, his skin is marked by burns and blotches. I know the container isn't much, but it'll keep you safe. He pauses. So, I'm not gonna chit-chat too long. You well enough to work? Sure. All right, then. He nods. Even in the grim furthest future, you still can't buy a damn GPU for your gaming PC? Fuck that! I can't even buy a damn GPU for my brain! I need that for my eyes! <laughs> At the yard, it's simple stuff. We hack these old hulls down and sell them off to the shipyards or the bright market dealers for cryo. Occasionally, we pull out some tech, something with a bit more value, but most of what comes in is scrap. Hard to find good hands here, but I figure as a sleeper, you'll be used to the manual labor. 
And obviously, I'll slip a few shits of commission based on what you turn up. Shits? Please. He pulls out a handful of small metal bars. Air Wild Cryo. Isolated from the market. That's what we use to trade out here. He stuffs them back in the pocket. He shuffles his feet nervously. Uh, look, I wouldn't usually do this. In my opinion, you'd be best suited moving on as quick as you can. Sleepers, well... He trails off. With the things being the way that they are for me at the yard... He pauses. I need the help. Why? Things are a little tight, that's all. I owe a little cryo to a client here or there. He pauses, thinking of something else to add. Look, just come down to the yard when you're feeling fresher. There's plenty to do. Will do. He nods distractedly and turns and walks away, the drone hopping along ahead of him. See you later, he calls back. Looks like it's time to get to work. Ooh, we can, like, scroll up and down to see the different parts of the ring. That's cool. Low-end gate? Or the yard? Or back to the container? We could technically just go here. We don't have to go there. But we did say we would. And this person did just give us a house. I don't know, I kind of want to lend him a hand. So I'm going to go there. Actions are the primary way you interact with the world of Citizen Sleeper. To perform an action, click and drag your chosen action dice into the slot. Actions reward you with clock progress, energy, condition, or items, depending on their outcome. There are three types of outcome. Positive. The action goes better than expected. Neutral. The action succeeds. Or negative. The action fails. Action dice affect these outcomes as follows. A six guarantees a positive. Uh, a five is high chance a positive or otherwise neutral. Uh, three or a four, you get 25% chance a positive. Probably just a neutral, but also a quarter chance a negative. And if you got a one or a two, it's either going to be neutral or it's going to be bad. Yeah, this game is very much, like, openly and heavily inspired, at least mechanically, uh, by, like, stuff in, in tabletop RPGs, which I think is really cool. Actions display information about their type, risk, and the skill and modifiers that apply to that action. Number one, type. This one is repeatable. Either critical or repeatable. Critical actions can only be performed once. Number two, the risk. Either safe, risky, or danger. If it's safe, no loss of condition, energy, or cryo. If it's risky, negative outcome means cryo or energy loss. If it's danger, negative outcome means condition loss. Neutral outcome can mean cryo or energy loss. Number three, skill. The skill that this action requires, either engineer, interface, endure, intuit, or engage. And then number four, modifier. Either minus one, zero, plus one, or plus two. This is added to the action dice when slotted and improves its value. Some actions require a plus one to perform. Debt called in. Dragos is tied up in something ugly, and if he misses a payment or two, things could get nasty. And back in business. Every salvager knows they are always just one lucky haul away from their next payday. So we've got hull dissection. Uh, even the rustiest hull can hide valuable components and materials. Extracting them means cutting carefully and skillfully. Or manual salvage. It's going to take some time to sort and cut your way through the towers of salvage, but you're no stranger to hard labor. We do have a minus one to uh, the endure skill, though. But engineering, where we got a net neutral on. And this one's risky, so this one I want to use uh, my, 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 highest, my highest chance of a good roll here. So, big money, no whammies? Yippee! 
Actions often progress clocks. Clocks are displayed below the actions that fill them, and they track your actions and how they affect the world. Filling a clock means something good or bad is about to happen. Hmm. Some clocks, such as the one tracking Drago's debt, are cycle clocks. These clocks tick themselves once each cycle and can complete without player input. Any active cycle clocks will be displayed on the icon for that location. He gave us, he gave us a place to live. I want to help him out if we can, because I'm assuming if this one fills up, things could get nasty. <laughs> this is some Powered by the Dark stuff. Yeah, I saw someone in chat just earlier mention this is like very heavily inspired by like something like Blades in the Dark, which is interesting. All right, so. We've got a minus one to this, but this one is a very safe action. Uh, so, here's hoping. Oh, all right, well. <laughs> Tutorial, drives and navigation. In Citizen Sleeper, you will unlock drives as you discover more about yourself in the world. Drives guide you in pursuing specific objectives, depending on which path you wish to take. You can track drives, and any track drive will place a yellow marker on locations that will help you pursue your goal. Access your drive menu via the arrow button at the top left of the screen. Current drive seems to be survive. We need to find a doctor for that. Uh, drives and navigation. You are now free to explore Erlen's eye and make a life for yourself here. Try tracking a drive that helps you survive. <laughs> Look for food to keep your energy up and a way to recover condition. Fill clocks to progress stories and find new opportunities. Remember to end cycle at your home when you're out of dice. Use the mouse wheel or W and S to scroll along the station. Rotate the view with A and D. Good luck. All right. Neutral outcome. There we go. Hey, we got some cryo for that, too. So. We've got repay Dragos. Dragos pulled you out of the salvage and set you up. Perhaps you can repay his kindness in time. Ah, oh, we can only track one at a time. I see. You need access to corporate pharmaceuticals, otherwise this escape attempt will come to rapid end. All right. All right, I just press the leave button. So we ought to, uh, you know, come in and do a little bit of help every day if we can. At least we can do, I reckon. We got the shipyard. Assist a shipbuilder. Hall materials. You don't have connections, but you do have skills. If you can get a shipbuilder to notice them, you might be in. We don't, uh, have a lot in the way of engineering, so maybe not the best call right now. And then also hauling materials with Enduring. As a newcomer, you can only gain favor by grabbing a load of materials and asking the nearest yard hand where to take them. Only way to get to know the shipyard is to work there. No tourists here. Dock C4, the Rotenda Wet Dock. Helian Crossing. Merchants willing to run the gauntlet of the Helian system are rare. Maybe Helian? I'm not sure. But those that do always return. Eventually. Interesting. The old dock terminal, the Rotunda. We've got a critical action here with a big time danger. <laughs> Steel dock plans. Avenage security have to have plans. Stealing them would be the fastest way to get to know this place. And the most dangerous. And explore the rotunda. The rotunda of the old dock is filled with passageways and concourses, leading to all kinds of docking bays. We've, we've, these are connected to a dock watcher. Getting to know the rotunda doesn't just mean new places to visit, it means keeping an eye on new arrivals too. And uh, Havenage watch list. Havenage runs the rotunda, and their security watches the docks. Better to avoid attracting their attention. Got Dock B2. 
salvage sortie. It takes several cycles to reach the Starward Belt and return, loaded with scrap from the old wrecks. And here, we have the Bright Market. Bustling open market. Ask for directions. Explore the market. Ask for directions. Why wander when there are hundreds of people that live and work within the Bright Market? All you need is the courage to approach them. This one is marked as danger. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, boy! <laughs> and we've got Explore the Market. Glad this game looks like the kind of game where you can just take your time considering things. Yeah, it, it, it seems like it's the sort of thing where, like, you have the opportunity to think out, like, what actions that you want to take. But, like, you know, actions have consequences and the, the clock is always technically ticking uh, when you make moves. Or, explore the market, which is just risky. Uh, the smells, sounds, and buzzing activity of the bright market makes it a dizzying place to wander. But an enticing one, too. I think it's worth the risk. This is a coin flip, here we go. Big money, no whammies. Yippee! You manage to f follow the flow of people, and you start to appreciate, or even enjoy, the chaotic layout of the markets. How are we gonna do with a one? Big money? No whammies? Yippee! We just need uh, one more and then we'll uh, have a little bit better knowledge of uh, the market. Ah, now we found Sabine, a slum doctor. Next! Comes the call from the enforcer at the door. The hab block. Decaying habitation block. You shuffle down the flickering hallway towards the open apartment door. You keep your head down and your shoulders high in the queue, trying not to bring attention to yourself. You were thankful for the tip-off that a doctor was operating out of this place. But now you're here, you aren't so sure. The gang enforcer on the door, the, the flickering light strips, the decaying hab block... They've all made the long queue a test of your nerve, but your options are few, and without a supply of stabilizer, this body, your body, will... <sighs> you suppress a shiver and shuffle forward to the front of the queue. You try to find something to distract yourself. Let's look inside. You lean against the doorframe and look into the apartment. The entryway is dark punctuated by the green indicators as stacks of sealed containers. You lean in and see amber light filtering through a far doorway, screened with plastic sheeting, beyond which blurred shapes move. A slap of the enforcer's palm against the doorway jerks you away. Wait your turn, he growls. After a few moments, a figure pushes through the doorway, and you catch a distant voice. Send the next one in, Shoshiro! The enforcer jerks his head, and you slip inside, passing through the dark entryway and pushing through the plastic sheeting on the far door. The room beyond is bathed in warm light. A floor-to-ceiling transparent panel gives a full view of the bright market sealed roof and the buzzing traffic above. And for a moment, you are transfixed by the motion. Come, sit, comes a sharp voice, and you see us, or I guess more like, come, sit, comes a sharp voice. And you see a silhouetted figure turned away, replacing the plastic sheeting over the frame of a simple folding bed. You make your way across the room. This is Sabine, a doctor in the Bright Market. The figure turns, and as they do, you see an expression of confusion flash across their features. They open their mouth as if to speak. They, they blink they quickly regain their composure. Please sit. They gesture to the bed, then turn to an open case of tools on the table. Hey, happy Pride Month! We found our first canonical non-binary character in this. Good for them. 
he said. Sabine turns, a compact diagnostic scanner of some kind in their hand. They hold it to their eye. Remain still, please. Their tone is clipped and businesslike. You stare ahead, still dazed from their expression when you entered. Fear. Recognition. Sadness. Unmistakably etched across their face. How long have you been on the station? They ask, the scanner still to their eye. A few cycles. They nod. It's good you came to me. They set the diagnostic scanner on the table. I'm going to start by assuming you don't know anything. They take your arm and roll up your sleeve, inspecting your synthetic skin. Your body is dying. They say it without ceremony, without drama, but not without empathy. SNR doesn't like to see its proprietary technology let loose, to prevent bodies like yours, with frames as they call them, from being stolen, repurposed, or in your case, escaping. They built in a process of so-called planned obsolescence. Frames decay rapidly when not regularly injected with stabilizer, one, with e- one which s and remains the sole producer of. They look up. Sound familiar? Yes. Good. That may help. They swap to your other arm, running some thin metal device over your skin. You feel your forearm tremble. I'm sorry, Sabine says. Or I guess, I'm sorry, Sabine says, and you're unsure if they mean for the cold touch of the metal, or everything else. Emulations like you, sleepers as most people know you, aren't classified as people in any of the surrogate systems. Or aren't classified as people in any of the surrogate systems. You have no rights, no status. They focus hard on the inspection of your arm. An S and ARP has no reason to release really stabilize her into the market. Sabine looks up as if to apologize again, but they stop themselves. I know little of this is used to you. They turn away, disassembling the metal instrument and cleaning it. Silence falls, fills the room as Sabine works. And then the silence gives way to tension. You stare at their back, willing them to say something. Anything. Sabine turns to face you. I may be able to help. They sigh. You see the darkness under their eyes, hear the fatigue in their voice. They gesture to the door. You saw Toshiro outside? You nod. He works for my... benefactor, Yadagon. They are influential in the low end. They give me this space to work, run the door, and take the profits. At the same time, I have to fix up their enforcers, tend to their implants, sew up their wounds. They look away. But Yadagon has connections. Smugglers from the Starward Belt, mercenaries working for the corporations on Ember. If they can source the stabilizer, maybe you'll have a better chance. Sabine sets down their slate, their notes complete. This... This is dangerous, and it'll be expensive. But I think we can do it. Why help me? Sabine walks away to the window, their face dappled by the shadows of passing drones. Let's just see if this works first. I'll let you know when I have a lead. You nod and leave. Sabine still staring out, unmoving. When you reach the lower level of the market, you look back up through the panels of the roof to see if you can see their face. But the room looks dark against the lights of the market. You duck your head and walk off into the crowd. All we have to do now is wait. Sabine thinks they can source some stabilizer through Yatagon, but it is going to take a few seconds. The very human instinct to apologize for things not your fault simply because it's terrible and should not have happened to someone. Yeah. Now I know a little bit about Emphis. Emphis. An imposing street food vendor. Emphis is busy his broad face uplit by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. 
With precise, delicate movements, he lays thick chunks of marinated fungus into a dented wok. His other hand, idly tossing a metal bowl of sliced vegetables and some red flex dressing. The smell is incredible. You watch as he fulfills a set of orders, keeping the fungus with the bright salad and depositing it in plastic trays. A stack of chits rattles in his apron pockets as customers file past the burner, heading over payment, or handing over payment. Let's watch. Despite the cue, Emphis doesn't rush. He dresses each portion individually, squeezing precise slugs of liquid from an assortment of bottles into the bowl of torn leaves and bright slices before tossing them loosely together. Occasionally, a waiting customer might mutter something about efficiency, but Emphis remains steady in his process. Hope you like mushrooms because they come up more than you'd think. So I've heard! I've, I've heard this is a game where it doesn't really advertise it in any sort of way, but a uh, remarkable bit in it about fungus, which is interesting. After a while, the queue fades back into the crowd, and Emphis sets down his metal bowl and looks up across the burner to see you watching him. I could feel your eyes burning a hole in my bowl. Free sample? Nod. He gestures neatly. Come over. The smell is almost unbearably strong as he cooks. The earthiness of the fungus laced with something so spicy the smoke makes your eyes water. The heat from the burner is like a bonfire, and your skin hardens in its glare. I know you, you sleepers, Emphis says while he cooks, his voice deep but clear. Hard life. A lot of stories. He glances up from beneath his cap with piercing eyes. I know. Let's tell him a story. You begin to tell him about your journey to the eye, and he nods as he cooks, his eyes never leaving his work. Tell him of the confusion, the pain, but also the sense of possibility and its sudden arrival. You tell him of the cold, dark, the container, and the endless cycles spent in it. Now, it seems, you tell him like some dream that you once had and can never forget. You tell him that the eye excites you, scares you, and you're unsure where to walk, where to look, what to do. Eventually, you tail off, running out of words. Do sleepers look the same based on their usage to the corporation? Yeah, the, 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 like, the beginning of the game, we had, like, the characters select for our classes, and they, they seem to have, like, you know, differences between them. So I'm assuming they are, like, at least to an extent, uh, designed for purpose rather than, like, aesthetics or anything. He places a plastic tray of steaming fungus in your hand. Next time... We can talk some more. He smiles. But next time, you pay. He slams a heavy hand against a button on the burner side. It shuts off. The roar of the flame and its impressive heat fades. Next time then, sleeper. He waves you away and begins to oil the walk. Before you turn back to the alley, you notice the geometric patterns of circular stars across his forearms each surrounded with a constellation of glinting pin marks. You walk away, and as you do, you take a bite of the rich, spicy, delicately sweet fungus. Your taste sensors light up like a fusion reactor. You'll be back. <laughs> we have discovered dinner. We can come here, uh, spend cryo, rather than uh, spending uh, any any dice to get to get fungus, which is how we get food, and we need food to survive. <laughs> Emphasis spiced fungus is one of the few things potent enough to stimulate your limited taste sensors. It's incredible stuff. Also, yeah, it does make sense that something like fungus would be like much easier to cultivate off in space, wouldn't it be? That's neat. You can take passage into the low end, but you need to pay the low end toll. After some spacers cause some trouble in the low end, Yatagon have imposed a toll for entry. No one gets in without paying. And we don't have that kind of money. 
so we're not getting in. We haven't seen anything yet uh, for interfacing, which is interesting. Oh, time since last autosave. Okay. Well, we've used up all our dice for the day. But I don't exactly think we can just go back here and talk to the old man. I think we just have to come here for work, basically. I clicked on the wrong one again. Let's, uh, let's go back to our home. Does our character have a little drone, too? I think so. All cycles need to end. Rest, and prepare for the next one. This time, you don't wake up. Instead, the ghost of the station, that shifting skeletal ring, surrounds you. For a moment, you are gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void. Then, the connections begin to establish themselves, threads tugging on the edge of your mind. These threads become vectors of exchange and then extensions as you feel your thoughts slipping away down them, dissolving into the millions of distributed nodes they connect to. You see the station. No, you feel the station. Like a web of texture in a smooth, black liquid. I would like to touch it. You find a point in the station, and you connect to it. Pulse through it. Follow loops and paths under and around. You touch more points than you have fingertips. And then you try, in a moment of impulsiveness, to connect them. The flow passes through you so rapidly that you feel yourself being carried with it, splitting and separating, eddying and gathering. As you do, things occur to you. Things that you can't possibly know. You reach out, try to grasp them, try to touch them too. You notice a tugging feeling, pulling at you insistently, as if it were a small child. Somehow it is pulling in two directions at once. You look down. All of a sudden, everything shuts off. You come back trembling into this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours, all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes now open to the dark steel walls. You feel a change within you, a shift. You close your eyes for a second, and you feel it, waiting there, the station splayed out across your mind, a storm of connective nodes waiting to be explored. And then it is gone. Today, we have three dice. Whatever that was, I want to do that again. I want to do that again! Let's go do some work for... For Amphis, or rather, for, for Dragos. I reckon we ought to use the six here and get that big bonus. Although... Maybe we ought to save that six just in case there's something else? This will be a good roll. There you go. Positive outcome. Back in business. Beneath the pockmarked hulls, you find hidden containers, alloy plating, and wire bundles thick as your arm, preserved in their trunking. Let's go for this, too. Big money, no whammies. Ah, that'll take some energy. After hours of careful slicing and separation, 
you uncover little more than layer after layer of worthless scrap. This is going nowhere. We got some money, at least. A little bit longer from now, we'll be able to help out Emphis some more. So while we wait for Sabine to acquire the stabilizer, we can work on repaying Dragos. And also getting to know Emphis. We've also got this six here. We could perhaps uh, use this on something else. Nothing in here yet. We've got the rotunda here. Hmm. Hmm. We could perhaps work on something here. Nothing in here either yet. That'll be in a couple more cycles. Do dice carry over to the next cycle? Nope, you gotta use them. You gotta use them while you got them. Nothing here. So, we could do something in the rotunda, or we could, uh, you know, we could finish our local knowledge here. I figure that's probably a good idea. Get this out of the way. Positive outcome. We get a plus plus. You keep your attention on the crowd around you as you pass along the bright walkways, taking it all in with an expert eye. Cool. New drive discovered. Build a ship mind. You've heard talk of a fabricator, fabricator owned by the Ort Exchange. With that and a few fragments, you could build a shipmind core. Interesting. What happens if you click the data button in the areas? Nothing as of currently. Now, now that we're here, we could play the exchange or sell components. There's an old shipmine fabrication stack in the back of the market, but only trusted traders get access to it. Here we have playing the exchange. The flow of chits and components in the exchange is complex, but a sharp eye and some tight trades can net you a good margin. Interesting. And this is for intuiting. Uh, a positive outcome isn't necessarily always two clock ticks, I don't believe. Uh, it, the implication seems to be that other things do, like, can have different outcomes. Let's order some fungus. Let's eat some, we need some energy. We got tired. Emphasis spiced fungus is one of the few things potent enough to stimulate your limited taste sensors. Emphasis doesn't trust people easily, but he notices his regular customers in his own quiet way. He gave us that free sample the other time. Let's go pay him for some food now. There we go. We got a whole bunch of energy. Your mouth stings as your sensorium sends warning signals over and over. This is the good stuff. <laughs> you know it's that good food when it's giving you warnings all over your cyber brain. We could also do things uh, in the shipyard. We can't today, because we have no, uh, no more dice, but... Hauling materials is very dangerous, and we don't have very good endurance, but we could maybe assist a shipbuilder at some point. Right now, though, uh... Maybe not right now, right now, because, you know, our cycle's over. But up next, I really do just want to, uh, help out, help out Drago here. Drago's... Alright, let's end our cycle. Hopefully soon we'll get uh, more about that uh, that help from uh, from the nice doctor. Again, the skeletal ring of the station fills your mind. It sparks with glittering lights like stars reflected in a winter lake. It is clearer, crisper than before. The threads still pull, but you remain in place flickering in the flow. 
Between the threads, you see bright shapes, catches of sh- caches of <gasps> shimmering light beneath transparent crystal forms. You follow the path of a thread across the ring, through these forms, and leaping off into the void, you begin to understand. These are the nodes and connections, a map of information, of communications. There are so many layers, so many loops, that it seems almost impossible to parse. But you begin to try. Let's focus on the nodes. The nodes are glassy and bright, but in all this flow, the only solid and fixed points. You approach one, a pyramid, or a triangle? Dimensions are difficult here, and lean close to it. Inside, shifting layers conceal a tangle of threads, a meeting point of exchange. But before you can glimpse inside, the glass clouds and hardens, cutting you off. The threads and nodes, passages and puzzle boxes. One leads to another. There is so much here. So many answers, so many questions. All you need to do is follow the paths and open the boxes. You look out across this ghost landscape of exchange and see an opportunity. But then that insistent tugging again, pulling at you. You look down and see the two lines, two threads pulling in different directions as if they were tied around you. The first. The first thread leads out, away from the station, into the inky black. Someone out there is tracking you, hunting you, following the thread to you. They are in a ship, and the ship is approaching ever closer with each cycle. The second. The second thread leads in, pulling deep into the station. Your gaze follows it, and this time you see something, a sphere shimmering above a strange, angular body. A pulse shoots out from it, passing over you like a torch beam, testing you, tasting you. You open your eyes. Time is short. Someone out there is tracking you, following your trail. It won't be long before they arrive. The cloud. Something has changed inside you. You can now access the data cloud of the eye, a network of decaying protocols and data caches. While there, you can use dice and items to access systems and extract data. But be careful. These networks are old and strange. Click the I button at the top of the screen to toggle this view on and off. Well, y'all picked operator. Y'all wanted operator. Let's start fucking operating. We've got the Havenage agent. Keynote 0831. Keynote 0102. Havenage Gate H4. Havenage Agent again. Solheim Gate S7. Keynote 4693. Nice. Keynote 9426. A Yatagon Agent. And that's all for now. Data actions allow you to extract data from the networks of the eye. They work like dice actions, but in order to unlock them, you must match your dice to the one displayed on the right of the action. If you have a plus one or plus two modifier in the interface skill, which we do, you will be given more possible dice to match. You can use any dice that matches the dice displayed. Once unlocked, the data can be extracted. The data here is part of a cache, tucked away during the collapse. Who hid this away? And for what purpose? 
ask about we slice in. Plus one, encrypted key. A stream of passcodes able to unlock the station's aging maglocks. We're in. You'll notice there's a... a little bar here that is filled up. That's interesting. The gate keeps traffic out of the habited shipyard's internal network. The correct cipher can get you can grant you access, which we do not have. But hey, maybe someday. How about here? A Havenage inch member is broadcasting on the open network from here, leaving them open to data extraction. Not today, but maybe soon. A lone connection feeds into this isolated node. Its last access timestamp is 1,000 cycles ago. That's a while. Another agent open to communication. Solheim gate. Uh, this gate conceals a network of systems which have been untouched since the Solheim collapse. We do not have a Solheim cipher. Orbited by the remains of a corporate countermeasure. Broken long ago by hackers. <laughs> this weird broken husk of software still patrolling its old grounds. Creepy. This node pulses faintly as it mines cryo at a glacial pace, abandoned by the hacker that repurposed it. Damn, they got miners out here too. They got cryo miners. Some gang enforcers' implants are chirping at comm signals. We could maybe see what they're talking about. This is interesting. This is this is the thing that I have skill points in, so I'm excited to uh do more of that eventually. Let's see. I gotta wait another cycle for this. While we do. Let's go back to the yard. And Let's go for... Hull Dissection. Let's get a big roll on this, why don't we? Let's get a big roll on this, because I want to get more progress here for, uh, for Dragos. There we go. That's plus two, plus two progress. Nice. Beneath the pockmarked hulls, you find hidden containers, alloy plating, and wire bundles thick as your arm preserved in their trunking. Like, we got quite a few cycles before something bad happens to him, but, uh, I would still like to do that as soon as possible, because I do get, you know, money in the process. We got these slowly progressing. Could we maybe do something here, then? We could play the exchange, which is risky, uh, but we've got a pretty decent chance at this if we put in a three. We have a 75% chance of this going well. Hmm. I think it's worth it. Let's go. Big money, no whammies? Yeah, neutral outcome. You lose a little, then claw it back on a stack of sealed air filters. Better step away while you're in the black. <laughs> there we go, we got ourselves a little bit of money. That's good, that's good. And of course, we're gonna get ourselves a meal. It's incredible stuff. There we go, we got our energy. And now... 
it's time to go back to bed. Wonder if this is weighted probability or if 75% literally just means 75%. I don't know what exactly you mean by that because I don't really know how stuff like Fire Emblem and uh, XCOM skew their different numbers. Remember, someone out there is tracking us. on the rolls today, huh? As you close up, a voice echoes down the corridor towards you. Sleeper, wait up! Let's... Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna turn. Feng. A Havenage Systems Engineer. Feng is coming down the corridor towards you, a wonky grin on his broad face. Hey, glad I caught you. Do I know you? He grins. You do now. He puts a hand on your arm. I've seen you hanging around, just wanted to chat. You staying in that thing? He nods back to the container, shaking his head. Rough. It can be hard to get a start on the eye. He looks away down the passage. What was it old Erlen said? The eye opens for all of us. A nice idea, but, well, not always very practical. He glances back at you. We do our best, but it isn't easy. We? You pass through into the main hallway. Have an inch. We are all one dysfunctional family. Feng puts an arm around you. I'm not part of the security branch, though, don't worry. I'm with Systems? Systems? Everything the eye runs on. He runs a hand along the passage wall. This place is a ruin, but the systems keeps it spinning somehow. At least we try to. He stops you in the quiet passage. Look, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I saw you around, and, well, I know a little about you sleepers. I have a little proposition for you. He glances around. But, uh, well, this is not the place for it. I have an office just across the way. Give me a cycle or two to prepare, then when you're settled, stop by. He lowers his voice and gives you a dark look. In truth, I need you. If what they say is true about you sleepers, well, there's work to be done. He pats you on the back, his voice bright and his dark look suddenly gone. Stay clean, sleeper. He walks off down the passage, raising a hand in farewell. Interesting. Before we do more, we have to go see Sabine. The first thing you see on entering is the glint of Toshiro's implants, like a cat's eyes, in the dark of the corridor. He nods you in as you arrive at Sabine's door. The entryway is still dark, and you push through the sheeting into the surgery. I have it. Sabine stands with a case open in front of them, a set of vials lined up inside, separated by foam inserts. They pick one up, rotating it in the warm light. I have no idea how Yatagan. They trail off. We should treat this with caution. It looks authentic, but I have no idea if it really is what it appears to be. I'm the test case? That seems to be the case. Unfortunately, I'm not sure we have another choice. They gesture for you to sit on the bed. The stabilizer works under a similar principle to an immunosuppressant in a transplant operation, in that it stops your body from rejecting the unfamiliar part of itself. In each case, in the case of your frame, the unfamiliar part is each of your biosynthetic organ groups, which over time are identified by your body as foreign material, and therefore must be eliminated. Uh, they they programmed us wrong as a joke. Sabine holds up a vial of the would-be stabilizer. However, unlike an immunosuppressant, the stabilizer doesn't do this by limiting your entire immune system. Instead, it re-encodes your biosynthetic organs with new protein chains, which act as passcodes within your immune system. The stabilizer refreshes those passcodes, keeping your frame from rejecting all of its own organs. 
passcodes? In very basic terms, yes. <sighs> they sigh. Look, what matters here is the stabilizer should be able to encode any organic or biosynthetic matter to be accepted by your immune system. They glance away. At least if the stabilizer is genuine. The only way to know for sure is to inject the vial. They begin readying the syringe. I will start with a small dose to limit the risk. How sure are you? I'm working with best guesses here. But the case, the vials, it, it looks authentic. Sabine cracks the glass neck of the stabilizer vial and uses a syringe to extract a fraction of the liquid. They tap the syringe, and you watch as if any sign might emerge from the clear liquid. You barely feel the needle, your frame registering the initial injection, but with little response. A sensation begins to spread from the site, a fizzing, trembling wave that disperses through your arm with incredible speed. Your vision goes white, and when it returns, Sabine appears encased in shards of sparkling light that slowly fade into darkness as you settle back against the bed. You swim in darkness, muffled noises like an argument heard from underwater, prickling waves of cold. When you sit back up, Sabine is sitting in a chair by the window, facing away from you, backlit by the glow of their slate. Awake? What happened? The stabilizer is genuine. They sit down beside the bed. I don't know how Yataga acquired a case of the stuff, but they did. Sabine looks troubled. Distracted. Yeah, perhaps maybe that is a little bit, um... Worrying in some regard that they did manage to get the official stuff from the corpo. How? <laughs> You should rest some more, but you're going to have to do that somewhere else. They gesture to the door. I, I have other patients. Sorry. Sabine nods towards the case. I'm afraid I can't offer you any more doses. You're gonna need to pay for your next dose. Silence fills the room, and they return to their glowing slate. Looking around the room, it seems different somehow, as if things have moved or shifted. You wonder how long you've been out. Sabine? Nothing comes free, sleeper. Remember that. You manage to get to your feet and wander out into the hallway. The queue stretches down the flickering corridor. Toshiro stands impatiently by the door and fixes you with a glare as you leave. You lower your eyes as you stumble past, somehow faintly aware of the station spinning beneath you. We're stable! Do a bit more work for Dragos here. We didn't die! Alright, now we just need one more uh, to get that up. I can wait till uh, next cycle, I reckon. Let's do a little bit of hacking, why don't we? You know, we've got this Yatagon agent here. Time to see what they're talking about. One Yatagon data. A data cache skimmed from Yatagon hardware. The cloud. In the data ghost of the eye. As you drift back from the node, something latches onto you. Red, strung tight around you, it tethers you in place. A taste. The voice makes you shiver. It's sort of somehow both distant and close behind your ear. You see a distant glint of light shut off, and then suddenly a shape is at your side. It stalks around you, circling like a shark, like a wolf. Entity unknown. Astringent. Processing. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Notice 
is how I'm here. This text has changed to Hunter. <laughs> Maybe we don't need to worry about it. I'm going to stay still. I don't want to spook whatever this is. Hunter. Sentient protocol. Unraveling. Please hold. The thread around you thickens until it is a ring, a cylinder, a tunnel of light circled around you. It is blinding for a moment. And then it is gone. As it fades, you see a figure, a creature in front of you. Its strange head flickers between different angles, reading you. What did you do? The shape paces around you on lithe legs, though there is no ground here to pace on. Entity, identify, origin, serial, cadence. The figure faces you, expectantly. I don't understand. Sentience, questionable. The figure's strange head rotates. Brackish signature. Of and not of. Attempting interface. As the figure speaks, more threads begin to spiral from its head. Thick, snaking, vine-like ribbons that flex and wave. They approach with intent. Stop! The figure halts its threads, its head twitching. Entity. Your identity is unknown. We only seek to correct illegalities. Can you confirm your legal right to sentience? I'm a person! Incorrect. You are an entity. All at once, Hunter's head is directly in front of yours, blocking your vision. You stink of their taste, the one from the sealed dock. Hunter shimmers with fury. I will find access. I will interface. Sealed dock? An entity hides in the rotunda. You are its puppet. Hunter extends a razor-edged thread. I will not be diverted from my task. It glows with murderous intent. Strike. You lash out with all your force, not a physical strike, but a focusing, a spike of interference leaping out like the tip of a spear. Beam! Hunter stumbles, shifts, separates. Wake up. You open your eyes, blinking back into the station light, shaking with fear. It is aware of us. Here we've got a crypto miner. So now we've got someone on the outside tracking us down, and we've got someone on the inside aware of us. Perk, transfer intercept. Oh, right, that just gave us uh, credits because we finished this. Let's extract this data and see what we get. Another encrypted key. We ought to be uh, a little careful. If we can help it. If we can help it. If. Let's get some food. We, uh... I think we need to wind down and get something to eat. <laughs> After that. Get closer to Fungus Fan. Now, if we want to get more stabilization, it is 100 cryo. Sabine is selling off the case of stabilizer vial by vial. You haven't been able to talk with them since your last visit. Interesting. 
so. Next step for surviving is buying a vial of stabilizer. I still think we ought to continue um, paying off Dragos' debt after all the help they were. I suppose he, rather. Ooh, tomorrow, though, there's going to be someone here. Tomorrow, someone's going to be here. Interesting. So now I'm full up on uh, energy and on uh, my body, which means I think we're getting more dice tomorrow. That's exciting. And never forget, it won't be long before they arrive. How y'all liking the game so far? Because uh, I fucking adore this, quite frankly. <laughs> I am so into, like, everything this is putting down so far. We've got a six! We've got a big six! Fang does want us to talk to him. Let's go talk to Fang. Sleeper! Fang catches your attention as you approach the Havenage building, leaning against a bay door to the side of the entrance. You approach. Easier to come in this way. Security, all that. He gives you a look. You know. He slams a button and the bay creaks open, blinking lights in the dark behind it. You follow Fang inside. Mostly chilling, but this is a really cool time and you might pick it up. Yeah, this is a really interesting story so far, and I'm, like, curious to see in what ways it might diverge, like, based on what your skills are and, like, what things you choose to pursue. Like, you could just completely not go for Dragos right at the start here and, like, just do other things, and it's like... I wonder how that would play out. Got here ten minutes ago and you're loving this? Hell yeah. <sighs> Truth be told, I didn't spend much time upstairs. This is where I work. The door hisses as it closes behind you. Whoops, I hit continue twice by accident. The bay is filled with pieces of hardware, all rigged up to generators and diagnostic slates and things you don't recognize that glow with blue screen light. There's a chorus of hums that blends into a single wave of static, filling the dark corners of the room. Feng leans onto a server stack and gestures around. You like it? You like it? I guess I, I was doing the voice a little bit of a higher octave. The, the, the deeper voice was for the fungus man. It's incredible. He smiles widely. I thought you'd say that. He taps a nearby server stack, which bleeps in response. This is my treasure trove, all dredged up from the sea of systems we call the Eye. You wouldn't believe what this place runs on. We're making friends with the computer guy, which is good because we're the computer decked out class, so it seems like a good type of friend to have. Reminds you very much of Altered Carbon, the book, not the TV series. I have never heard of either of those. <laughs> That's interesting. He steps over to a towering block, speckled with vents. <laughs> Thank you, Googals, for the 14 months. <laughs> I'm immortal, made of wires and human teeth. Thank you for all the cool streams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the 14 month resub. Very much appreciated. He steps over to a towering block, speckled with vents. Some of these systems are from the original station. Uh, I? I, I I'm assuming that's meant to be, like, I, because it, it's, the joke is it's called the I. I-1, the one Solheim built. We've had to invent new components, repair things we never built, reverse engineer entire subsystems into existence. Residents here look up at the I and think they're seeing a constant, a, a concrete reality. But this place is a system in constant flux, decaying and growing, collapsing into new configurations. Yeah, I think I think perhaps we got a, a first-hand glance at just that. I, I think I get where you're coming from here, but I think I understand. He walks down between the hardware stacks and you follow. <laughs> we are keeping this place alive, but also remaking it into something new, dragging it away from those corporate origins. He stops. At least that's what I'm trying to do. He turns back to face you among 
Don't fucking say it. The flickering machines. They hum all around you. I know you can see this too, sleeper. All these systems and sections. You can, can't you? I can see it. It makes sense, right? You're between here and there. Between the people and their systems. You light this place up like a beacon. That's what I need. You glance at the lights around you. And as you do, they seem to flicker. To realign. To follow your gaze. Feng notices it too. I'm guessing being a beacon isn't always ideal when you're on the run, though. They are tracking me. He pats you on the shoulder. Maybe I can help with that. A lot of old growth in this place. Subsystems I can't see. Access protocols lost in time and decay. Secrets. A shitload of secrets. First swear! First swear of the game! Congratulations, Fang! It's yours! <laughs> with your help, I can unlock this place. Break off those less ghost limbs of corporate control. He lowers his voice below the hum. Even in Havenage, there's old growth. Those whose roots trace back into those bad old days. You can help me dredge up the past, and I'll see what I can do about that track of yours. He winks. I like this dude. I like this dude. <laughs> this this dude's also just a big computer nerd, and also he's like, hey, it sucks out that the corpos are tracking you, right? Maybe we uh do some do some exploration in the network together, and I'll uh, see about jackhammering that shit out of your skull. <laughs> I'm in. I need the money. I'm in. Fang pumps his fist and claps you on the shoulder. He meets your eye. You won't regret this, sleeper. Fang passes you a ragged-looking metal tab. A gift. He smiles. It's a Solheim cipher. I dug it up from the depths of the station. Slot that into an old network gate, and you'll be able to pull out all kinds of secrets from the nodes inside. Hey, we finally got our first Solheim cipher. He walks you back to the front of the bay. Start by bringing me whatever you can turn up. Use that emulated use that emulated mind of yours and see what's there. Let's get a picture of how things are. Way ahead of you, bud. Way ahead of you. Those above, he nods at the ceiling, have granted me an acquisitions budget. I can pay you for whatever useful data you bring in. You are fined. One. Credit for a violation of the Redwood Morality Statute. You'll never take me alive, fucker. Thanks for the bits, though. <laughs> I know you need it. He slams the door button again. Keep it quiet and keep it clean, sleeper. And I'll see you soon. You step, blinking, back out into the passage. Those flickering lights still in the back of your mind. Okay, that was cool. That was cool. Uh, we have survive, repay Dragos, get to know Emphis, extract the pass and disable your tracker. Fang wants to dig into old Solheim networks in search of secrets that could change the future of the station. There was a big thing in the Expanse that Spacers adapted as a sort of physical language because he can't communicate with words in a vacuum. Interesting. Yeah, it's 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 cool that there's a lot of like uh, physical affection and body language and stuff like that that translates in an in that you can like certainly read into in an interesting way because you know it's it's space it's in space we can deliver data here we can deliver the Solheim cipher which we already have Fang will pay you well for any Solheim data you dredge up from the eyes old systems what he does with it is anyone's guess oh wait no this is the cipher we need to put the data in there never mind I'm a fool I gotta I gotta do that in the in the network first so why don't we go do that it's a Havenage Gate, Havenage Agent, Keynote, Havenage Agent, Solheim Gate. Let's have a, let's have a look in the networks, why don't we? Just a quick sticky beak, why don't we? Plus Gate S7 access. With a squawk of noise, the old gate flips open. Granting access. Uh -huh. 
Now we've got Solheim nodes I-32, I-21, and I-07. A Solheim demon attempts to protect this node, squeaking out protective protocols like a mantra. Are you kidding me? This tech is like years out of date. This is nothing for me. I'll take that. If you don't mind. Neutral outcome. Solheim data. It's over here. I need four for that. Network storage holds corporate records, most of them corrupted by a failed system purge. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we've got other things to look into today. For instance, I got some data. I've got some data just for you. What did that say? Let's see. Uh, set of data unearthed from the eyes old corporate subsystems. Can I, can I put it in? Thank you. Let's start this. We go. That's 15 cryo. That's dinner, baby. Feng's eyes light up as the data is transferred over. He hands you a stack of chits and waves you off. Nice. While we're here, the scrap freighter is here. Offloading scrap. The freighter will stay docked for as many cycles as it takes to offload its hollow scrap into the Havenage Yards. We can buy some scrap. The big stuff goes to the shipyard, the valuable stuff to the markets. They'll let you buy a few crates, but not much more. Or we can get paid to offload it. But that's dangerous, and we don't have good endurance. Yeah, I, I've always been a fan of, like, um, you know, sci-fi taking the edge of, like, um, machines and technology both being treated as, you know, like a... Like, like, like a thing, a, a creation of people, uh, software, but also, like, being something more, uh, something almost kind of, like, mystical, like, you know, the whole ghost in the machine sort of thing. It's cool. It's cool. I like it. We do have a lot of dice, but I might have other things I want to spend it on. So let's look at our options for now. This, uh, will eventually be filled up, but not yet. hardware exchange here. We can sell off uh, our things here if we want to. Oh, we can sell off scrap specifically. We don't have scrap. Okay. Uh, we've got low end gate here, which we can't afford to go past, but I want to save up some money to eventually be able to afford uh, more, 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 more stuff to keep us stable, so... Let's go to the yard first and uh, use up one of our threes, because we got a pretty good chance on this roll. There we go. Takes you a while to get a handle on Dragos' equipment, but before long you're precisely slicing down hull plates into neat piles. Alright, let's go talk to Dragos. You arrive into a buzz of activity at the yard. Red blinking lights flash across a vast dark shape, suspended below the dome. They flicker across scorched hull plates and bent structures, spilling from holes in the twisted shape. The cutter is huge, and has been torn apart in some violent encounter. She's a beauty, isn't she? Dragos stands to the side focused on the hulking ship as it is lowered into the yard. What is it? Dragos laughs. <laughs> that, my friend, is grade A scrap. I should thank you. This place was on its last legs when you turned up, and now look at this. The ship descends slowly, its interior visible through multiple hull breaches. You struggle to gather the same enthusiasm as Dragos for this monstrous craft, but you can't you can't help but think of what happened or what became of its crew. What happened? What do you mean? He glances over at you. Managed to convince your salvager friends to give it to me on credit, that's what happened. 
No, what, what happened to the ship? Not my concern. He shrugs. The ship creaks like a calving iceberg as it reaches the base of the yard. Dragos is visibly excited. I know I said you shouldn't stick around, but I'm gonna need some help with this one. The drones start to crawl over the hulk, their lights illuminated flashes of dented hull. Watching, you wonder if you arrived in a similar fashion, locked inside that container, the wreck of the Essen Art freighter lowered into the yard like a corpse ready to be butchered. Or was the container delivered to Dragos on its own, a womb for your rebirth into this strange station? You shudder. Perhaps if you could learn something about this ship, you might be able to trace the path that led you to this yard. Drago squeezes your shoulder. After these past cycles, I think we're up for it. What do you think? You see the fading name of the ship emblazoned on its side. Winter Light. Let's do it. He claps you on the back. Glad to hear it. Come back in a few and we can make a start. Real beauty. Dragos repeats, perhaps just to himself. You take one last look at the shattered ship as the drones start cutting, and then slip out of the yard, feeling suddenly cold in the empty passage. Interesting. And hey, we got our first achievement called Paid Off. You've completed your first drive. Each drive completed unlocks an upgrade point to spend on upgrading your character. Access your character menu via the arrow button at the top right of the screen. We can upgrade something. Oh. We've been doing, um, quite a fair bit of engineering. It would, it, would, it would cost us a point to burn to just get rid of the Endure, and we've kind of been avoiding actions like that for now, and it's not really been a big of a deal, so I don't want to burn it there. Uh, dice actions display potential positive and negative outcomes is interesting for Intuit. Uh, then Thrill Seeker! <laughs> Chance to gain energy after any engage action? <laughs> That's fun. I do like the idea of getting random scrap, and then we can eventually maybe use scrap to start repairing ourselves. Which, uh... Seems like a good investment, quite frankly. Uh, then, you know, we can focus on the, uh... The electronic and the mechanical. That seems like a fun way to do that. And then maybe, like, uh... Get our intuit up to be good at, like, uh, people skills. Yeah, in the meantime, that seems like good money. So I think I'm gonna do that. There we go. Then next up after that, we gotta spend a point to get that plus one. Oh, I see. So it's you get uh, the benefit and then the skill point. Right, like like the, 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 the plus one and then the next benefit and then the plus two. Okay, so it's not the benefit and also the plus. It's, it's one then the other. I see. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, so, I think next we're going to go for that plus one, uh, and then maybe self-repair and icebreaker and like, predictive reasoning. Seems like uh, some interesting investments. Now, we've repaid Dragos. You helped clear Dragos' debt. You two are now even. So what do we got? Dragos' nerve. Dragos seems increasingly nervous about your presence in the yard. You're not sure he's going to hold his nerve much longer. Interesting. Interesting. Forensic Trawl. Investigating the winter light means picking through its systems and structures with care. It won't pay... Or, let's see. It won't pay, but you may find answers. And then Cutter Salvage. Shipbreaking is tougher than slicing up loose salvage, but Dragos is happy to pay you a fixed wage if you're up for it. And this one's dangerous. Hmm. I think 
I'd like to learn. So let's start that. Plus two and a scrap. You discover a hidden compartment with spare components and backup data storage. This has to contain something of use. Ooh, a ship mine fragment. Interesting. How about we spend a four here as well? Here we go. Uh, picking through the wrecked cutter is slow work, but you start to piece together the impact patterns and blast marks. So we've got a, a couple of days before Dragos seems to lose his nerve, I guess. We've got a three, which we could spend on a number of things. Let's see. We could play the exchange, but it's risky. That's for intuiting. Hmm. That might get us a little bit more money, though, which might be good. Let's also track um, a new one of these. Let's see. I want to get to know Emphis. Let's toggle that tracking. I haven't tried the shipyard yet, no. Uh, but I'm interested in getting access to that ship mine. All right, that's a positive outcome. We, got, we get two bonus. You snap up scrap by weight, then parcel it off to traders with a nice markup. You start to get a sense of the traders to trust. I see, I see. What's a ship mind? I'd like to figure that out. You heard talk of a fabu fabricator owned by the Ord Exchange. With that and a few fragments, you could build a ship mind core. It uh sounds like it's something related to like onboard systems on a ship. Possibly sapient in some way. So that sounds fun. Let's get ourselves some food. <sighs> this is the good stuff. Now, we can talk to Emphis. Sleeper! Emphis calls out to you, a booming voice that echoes through the corridor. Tell me a story. He throws a handful of chopped mushrooms into his walk, the fire leaping up to meet the oil. I see you cycle in, cycle out, but we never speak. Tell me a story. What kind? Any kind. He pauses to drizzle something from a plastic bottle into the walk. But one of yours. He looks up at you. Nothing's stolen. You pause. The spice is rich in your nostrils. And you think about the kind of story you'd like to tell Emphis. You look at Emphis, the listener. And imagine he's heard it all before. Perhaps he'd enjoy... A strange story. Something with some spice. Let's tell him about our dreams. All the sleepers, you tell Emphis, had dreams. Some were simple, memories left over from the emulation process that had become tangled up in their minds and wouldn't come out when they slept. It wasn't rare to hear a sleeper in the dorm scream or cry out in the night. But your dreams, those gray, skeletal afterimages of systems and structures, of threads and patterns, weren't like the others. They weren't memories or nightmares. They were reflections of reality. Distorted, yes, but somehow true. You learned back then to keep quiet about them, to let them flow through your mind like water. That was until now, until you arrived in this place. Now your dreams colonize your waking life. They slip behind your eyelids with every blink. Now you understand they aren't dreams at all. Some process of interfacing, of speaking, of living in another world that flows through this one, like smoke through air. You 
tell him that you do not know if there's a reason for your dreams. Perhaps, you reason, it's just some side effect or particular quality of the frame you inhabit. But whatever it is, it is a gift, and you hope to make use of it. Emphis finishes cooking and squints a little at you. Sleeper? He smiles. You are quite the storyteller. He eyes you, and you realize that he's trying to gauge how honest you've been in your story. Emphis passes you the meal he's cooked, and you take it gratefully. As you eat, he talks. A natural exchange. Thank you, sleeper. He looks around at the emptying market. But my time's done for today, and I do not want to keep you longer. So I will make a proposal. He gestures to the plastic boxes of ingredients stacked behind his stall. These are good enough for most, but someone told me a story that made me think a couple of cycles ago. They said that across the gap, in the greenway, fresh mushrooms grow. Have you heard this? No. Neither would I. But I trust the one who told me. Emphis begins packing up his things. Can you bring me some? I can't cross the gap, and I worry about leaving my things behind. He smiles. I'm sure a storyteller like you could handle the trip. I will prepare them for you. And if you wish to tell it, be the audience for another story. Agreed. Good! Booms Emphis. Then I will wait for you to bring them. Emphis sides, sides his walk away and straightens up. I will prepare a recipe then, sleeper. Good luck with your foraging. I love this dude. This dude's great. You turn away and walk back into the main market, the rich taste of Emphis' food still lingering in your mouth. Stories of food, you think. A trade that seems more than fair. We need to bring Emphis Jirol caps. Jirali caps? Like a light bulb for the 18 month resub. Excited to be able to watch Holly's streams again. You always pick the coolest looking game. <laughs> I hope everyone is having a good day, smart. I like to think I have pretty interesting tastes in video games, and I'm glad other people seem to agree, as evidenced by the fact that people like watching them. <laughs> Thank you very much for that resub very much appreciated. The writing is brilliant between the dreams and the character. It's very vivid. Yeah, the, like, the choice of words they use for all of this just feels so... I don't know if evocative is the right word, because I feel like it's like, well, yeah, but what is it evoking? But, like, my god. It is, it is really something special. Seriously considering picking this up? I think you ought to. Uh, in just a little bit of time I spent with it so far. I am a huge, huge fan of this so far. All right, I would like to uh, disable my tracker, quite frankly. So that's gonna be uh, the next thing to go for. We got Yatagon data and an encrypted key. All right. We are out of dice for the day. So let's go back to our container. It won't be long before they arrive. Like it when games like this give the protag a distinct personality instead of just being a blank slate. It, it, it is a lot of fun when you have, when they give you like bits to work with. Um, I've heard Disco Elysium is really good in that regard, and that, you know, you're you're playing an actual defined person, an actual character in that. Uh, another one I also really like is um, Fallout New Vegas. In that it, it, it gives you, like, a bunch of little bits that, like, okay, well, this... You can, you can choose these to inform, like, the kind of character that you're playing. Uh, and, like, it doesn't necessarily always have any sort of bearing on gameplay, but it's interesting just for the sake of, like, you know... What's the character you're playing? What's the kind of character you're playing? Who are they? How are they? Uh, how do you want them to be represented in this world? Here's options for that. And that's really cool. Like, like there's literally options for your character to be like, I don't fucking know what fish are. What the hell is this state you're talking about? I don't think it exists. It's great. <laughs> 
Disco Elysium is interesting because you're playing a defined person but also get to redefine him to a degree. I've heard so much good stuff about Disco Elysium. I desperately need to check it out someday. Playing this game, if anything, has also made me more hungry for Disco Elysium, so... I reckon I'll probably get around to it maybe a little bit sooner than I thought. Alright, let's... Spend some of our lower rolls here. And, uh... Start slicing through some of these nodes. We got these Solheim nodes here. And a one or a three for that. So let's use our three. Leaking corrupted contractor lists from the early days of the system's palladi palladium rush. Interesting. Ah. The hunter grows more aware. Yeah, this, this game definitely seems like a much smaller in scope than something like Disco Elysium. Uh, like, I'm okay with that, personally. Uh, I think it's great when a story is, like, self-contained and knows exactly how long it needs to be. Which, uh, I've heard this game is pretty good about that, so uh, I'm excited to see where any of it goes. Also, it's replayable. You can go after different, like, different things. I don't know if it's possible to do all of them in one run or not, so I guess we'll see. This network storage holds corporate records, most of them corrupted by a failed system purge. Let's nab that! Disco Elysium deals with some real heavy stuff. I'm very much aware of that, yes! <laughs> I have I have heard people talking about it for the past couple of years. Don't worry, I know. When I stream it, I'm gonna have like a uh, some command to bring up like does the dog die so people can look up like specific uh you know, specific, like, content warnings if they feel they need that. Uh, I would like to go in knowing as little as possible, but I've had some friends, you know, tell me some stuff like, hey, if, if this is, like, a thing you have problems with, maybe be mindful of that. Uh, but yeah, um, I appreciate the thought, but don't worry, I'm aware. <laughs> Let's deliver some data. Fang's eyes light up as 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 the data is transferred over. I had trouble reading that for some reason. All right, let's do that again. Hell yeah, that's all full up. And we've got some pretty big dice rolls for the rest of the day too. So let's talk to Fang. As you enter the bay, Fang is nowhere to be seen. The banks of servers and machines blink out of the dark in staccato rhythms, unseeing eyes of the station's digital ghosts. <sighs> Shitheads! Feng's voice echoes from behind a stack, followed by their hammer of a fist on a metal casing. Those snaky shitheads. Who's snaky? <sighs> Sleeper! <laughs> Feng's smiling head pops up out from behind a stack. Uh, just the emulated consciousness I have been eager to see. <sighs> Come back here. You pick your way between the thrumming stacks, trying not to trip on the loose bundles of cables that blanket the dark floor. Fang is sat in front of a set of monitors mounted to a stack. <sighs> Tell me, sleeper, what do you see here? Fang waves at a monitor to his side, glowing with pale lists of information. You lean in closer, looking for the links in the data. The table seemed to be filled with personal information. Names, genders, dates, ID numbers. All the markers of institutional records. People. People, yes, but... Whose people? Solheim? Bingo. He taps at the terminal. I pulled these from the old data you brought in. All employees of the Eye's original owners. And... He leans past you and scrolls the list down. This one. This is a snaky shithead. He stabs at the screen with a finger. The name reads, Hardin Hurst. Friend of yours? Feng gives you a sideways look. Funny you should say that, sleeper. He drags a stool out behind him and motions for you to sit. There just so happens to be a Hardin Hurst. In Havenage. He waits for your reaction. Are you sure? In Havenage? 
That's it. He's right there on the station now. Fang leans back in his chair. Just think about it. Decades ago, Harden worked on this station as a... Feng leans across to look at the monitor. Senior Strategic Operations Executive. Feng raises an eyebrow at you. Or raises his eyebrows at you. R. Harden was keeping the money coming in for Solheim. He defined priority growth initiatives by making sure the extractors they contracted out to were hooked into a system that outsourced all the risk and kept the profit. Good ol' Harden shuttled thousands of palladium-rich workers into an infrastructure which meant that their cut of the work they did went straight back to Solheim. How do you know this? I grew up here, sleeper. This is my history. I am a child of the Collapse. Feng turns back to his screen, staring hard at the strings of code flickering by. Before I was born, my parents were Solheim contractors. They ate in Solheim canteens, worked on Solheim ships, they breathed Solheim air, and slept in Solheim beds. Feng's voice rises as he speaks, his hands, fists on his terminal edge. And the work that paid for that existence? The cycles of hard extraction out in the belt? Solheim took their cut. This was a company town, so to speak, and my parents were just another in the long line of freelance contractors willing to risk their lives for a shot at anything other than poverty. Disposable. This guy, stabbing at Harden once again with his finger, strategized all that, did the sums. I gotta drink water. And then, somehow, thousands and thousands of cycles later, still going, still here, crawling in the walls like some shithead snake. He survived the revolution. But how? These guys, they were big time. There's a lot money can get you if you're a company man. Feng relaxes a little. But how is Harden still kicking? I really don't know. He turns to you and smiles. So we are going to find out. Harden's now a big shot in the shipyards. Just a few degrees back around the eye from here. Feng brings up a map of the lower eye. Half an inch might be born out of Erlen's revolutionary zeal. But a flat hierarchy, it is not. Harden happen to float to the top. Feng zooms in on the far yards. Feng grimaces. Thing is, I don't have access to the systems. Shipyard crew's pretty paranoid. They don't like anyone from systems digging around in their stuff. Plus, we need more than just the names of a Solheim executive. We need proof. Feng holds up a thumbnail-sized drive. That's where this little creation of mine comes in. Call it a ripper worm. He turns the drive between his fingers. It'll rip through any digital storage and spin out a silken thread of filtered data. This one is set on the scent of hardened Hurst. He hands it over. Getting into the compound might be tricky. Feng puts a hand on your shoulder. But you, however, have a particular knack for... remote access. Feng grins. If you can extract yourself a Havenage cipher from a Havenage agent, they sometimes carry them among their data caches. You can crack open the compound's network and slot the worm in through any open port. You never even need to go near the shipyards. Oh, I like the sound of this. So what do you say? You up for it? Yeah, kind of unequivocally. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you'd be happy to catch this snake. And don't worry. Once we nail this guy, I'll start working on that track area of yours. I haven't forgotten. Feng scratches at his chin. Anything the worm gets, I'll send it back here. There's something wrong here, and I aim to get to the rotten core of it. Hell, this is our home. We ought to try and make things a little better for everyone here, you know? Because that includes ourselves. You leave Feng, digging through the data among the wires and machines of the old station. As you walk out, you try to imagine the eye as it once was. A vast machine running smooth and strong, directed by people like Harden. Ah, we don't have uh, the exact data key we need. A vast Solheim built machine into which thousands poured from the surrogate systems, looking for a new life. The hope of a better future, engineered to line someone else's pocket. 
It's an idea you are intimately familiar with. This is personal to us now, too. <laughs> you think of Harden still alive, still part of this place, and wonder if the past is ever truly past. Interesting. Interesting. Let's take a quick peek into here and see if we've got any, uh... It's a Havenage gate. Let's see if we've got any... Havenage agents. We need a two or a three, which we don't have. So we'll come back tomorrow. We'll come back another time. In the meantime, we've got other work we can do. We've got other work we can do. For instance, start looking at the ship. Some more. Let's see. This is a pretty high chance of a positive, and either way, we don't get anything bad from this. All right, that's plus two, and a scrap. You discover a hidden component with spare components and backup data storage. What if we just use all of our dice here and then we can just have one more uh, for the next day? Ah, negative outcome. Plus yard clearance. Ooh. It's impossible to understand anything with the ship being salvaged as you look. Dragos gives you a disapproving look. Ah, he just wants to cut this up. That's why he's getting a little nervous. That, that makes sense, okay. Because he needs to salvage this for money. Ooh, that's two negatives. Oh well. We tried our best. And hey, we've got, um... We've got 100 credits. Uh, for anyone who's played this game, if we buy the stabilizer now, does it get used right away? Or is it just like put in our back pocket, basically? It's an item? Okay. I should buy this now, then. Be useful to have on hand. There we go. One stabilizer, minus 100 cryo. Toshiro takes the chits and hands you a vial. When you ask after Sabine, he doesn't respond. Yard clearance is a positive meter. See, yard clearance is specifically for, like, cutting up and salvaging the ship. We, we can't continue to investigate what happened to the Winter Light if there's nothing left of the Winter Light. So you, you, you want to try and do one before the other. As, quick, as you quickly leave the surgery, eager to be away from Toshiro's gauge, you notice something wrapped around the stabilizer vial clutched tightly in your hand. You open your hand, and a thin film marked with holes and sigils unrolls from around the vial. On one end, it has a hard metal strip, a handle. Inspect the film. You hold the cloudy film up to the light. It is perforated with an ornate pattern of holes. You can make out a word among the markings. Pass key. Is this an entry key for somewhere? Inspect the handle. The metal handle is worn and pitted, but you can see a set of numbers imprinted into it. 207F. And then, crudely scratched into the handle at some later date, low end. For a moment, you consider going back to the surgery to return the key, and then quickly think better of it. Did Sabine want you to have this? Or is Toshiro passing on a message? Time to head to the low end and find out. Alright. That's one more upgrade point. Let's... Hmm. Now what I'm wondering is... Should we go for... more into it as well, because we're using that specifically to, to like, analyze the ship. Uh, but this specifically only tells us, like, uh, what outcomes might give for us. 
So it's not as immediately useful, but then we could use our next uh, drive to get that to a plus one. Or maybe we could go for the plus one engineer right now and just start getting that, that, that bonus number right away. Because the bonus number might be handy, it might open up some new things to us. We could also go Icebreaker right away, because we are trying to get, like, as much data as possible. Uh. And so that might be immediately helpful to us in trying to get rid of the tracker. Oh, this costs two upgrade points! Okay. I see, we would have to save up for that. So. In that case... And then it costs three to get a plus two bonus. Cool, 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 cool. I think, in that case... Let's go for... Uh, the Intuit, just to line us up for the, the plus one for Engineer and Intuit, and then we can decide um, which one we want after that, once it's, like, more immediately relevant. And hey, knowing what our roles could give us, uh, does sound useful. Let's see, we've got a bit of scrap, which we can sell off. Music reminds you of FTL a little bit. Yeah, kinda, huh? Filters, capacitors, and sensors. Useful salvage to the right person. Let's get some money. Neutral outcome. Plus 12 cryo and more on trusted trader. You make some good cryo on the components, which moments later are being disassembled in front of you. Man, FTL did have a real good soundtrack though, didn't it? Ah, we don't have uh, the mushrooms for that yet, but we can certainly get food. So let's do that. Here we go. how much the stabilizer does as well, like how many pips of energy that is. It seems like it might actually give quite a bit, so we don't want to use it right away. Definitely want to uh, keep it in the bank for later. Oh, here we go. Uh, that regular dose is a stabilizer. Sleeper bodies actively decay. Corporate insurance policy to disincentivize escapees like you. And if I put it in, it won't tell me. Never mind. So let's not. Oh, wait. No, it doesn't. Never mind. Let's end our cycle. We need to start making some money so we can start tracking down Sabine, possibly. We also need to get going on uh, getting the tracker out. A lot of big rolls today. First and foremost, let's see. Perk predictive reasoning. Plus, plus, winter light, or plus yard cleared. So this is on positive and this is on negative. I see. Uh, or just maybe, like, just possibilities in general. So let's go for a big one here. Get this done. And some scrap. There we go. And then let's spend um, a five on this. Let's see what we get. we go. More scrap. You'll love to see it. Squeezed into the office at the entrance to the yard, you lay out everything you have on the winter light across the metal desk. Your makeshift forensic notes glow on Dragos' old writing slate, overlapping lines and scrawled annotations. A set of drone scans fill the small terminal with a spectrum of colors, a heat map of damage and decay. A crumpled printout from the office's ship registry lies beside them, synthetic paper so thin it is almost transparent. Look at the monitor. Reactor failure. That is the verdict that anyone would have returned after a cursory glance at the, these stacked heat maps of the remains of the winter light. On the terminal screen, the ship is shown in, shown in section, blotches of color marking the approximate damage the ship sustained. Dominating the view is a single blood-red rose, radiating from the ship's fraction drive. A simple story. A catastrophic failure of the drive core, 
leading to a fatal hull breach. A well-documented failure, likely brought on by wear or misuse. But you aren't looking at the rows of the reactor. You are looking at a smaller, paler mark. One that might be easy to miss at first glance. It is thumbprint-sized, and delicately placed over the control servos for the ship's main external airlock. It suggests a controlled, ex shaped explosion. One designed to punch through the hull and allow access to the airlock from the outside. You are looking at it because it is troubling you. I don't think this was accidental reactor failure, huh? Look at the slate. Your attempts at a reconstruction of the winter light before its fatal accident consists of a series of overlapping sketches and diagrams, showing possible layouts and configurations of the gutted cutter. This was no off-the-shelf model. It was heavily modified. Parts replaced with inventive configurations, the new retrofitted into the old, handmade joints and reconditions filters. This was someone's old pride and joy. A lifetime project kept running with care and intuition. It also contained a set of hidden compartments. You missed them at first, where the hull had been thickened, the corners rounded to disguise the change. But they are there. Interesting. Something might be hidden in there. Let's look at the printout. A plain list shows the registration history of the winter light, the gaps between the entries tantalizingly opaque. Its first registration was a couple of thousand cycles ago on this very station, logged at the central hub. From here, the registry tells the story of a busy ship, one that rarely stayed on station for more than a few cycles and often took on voyages that kept it away from the eye for up to a hundred cycles. The winter light got little rest. An old ship, many cycles under its belt, carefully maintained. A reactor failure preceded by a carefully concealed external entry. A suite of hidden compartments tucked away. This was the winter light. And this was its story. But that's not the full story. Because there's something else. It is little more than a list, a tiny chunk of data you were able to pull from the ship's system. The main systems were fried, of course, but the winter light had a separate system. One tucked away in one of its hidden components. Armored. Airwalled. The list, the only recoverable piece from the whole system, is a partial inventory. It details the contents of the hidden compartments. Some of it you recognize. Some of it you don't. Shipmind ROMs, Shimmer, Cryo Chain Codes, and then the final entry Passenger Sleeper. You stare at the list on the terminal and try not to think about what it was like arriving here in the cold for so long, half frozen in the freight container. Had this sleeper been smarter, luckier? How would they convince the Winter Light, a smuggler ship if you ever saw one, to extract them from s and Luckier. You laugh. There had been no remains found in any of the Winter Light's compartments. You had checked. They weren't so lucky, you guess. Not in the end. You hold up a vial of stabilizer to the light. This was all you find in their compartment. A parting gift from s and well, it won't go to waste now. You put it back in your pocket. The thought still bothers you, though. Two ships carrying sleepers coming into the same yard? Two. One after the other. That feels wrong. You flick back and forth between data sets on the terminal, thinking. And you see that thumbprint again. The mark of someone trying to get in. Someone who entered the winter light with precision and speed. And when they were done, left the reactor to clean up the rest. The thought of that person makes you shiver. Suddenly, the office door creaks open. Dragos stands there in the doorway, staring at the equipment and notes you've assembled. What is all this? He snatches the slate from the desk faster than you've realized he could move. You're running an investigation here? What am I paying you for? 
The drone on his shoulder starts whining shrilly, his anger passing it through his implants. Where is the ship from? Leave this alone. He starts shaking his head. I know you have a lot of questions, but this isn't the way. He turns away, muttering to himself, This is the last thing I need. This ship had a sleeper on it! Dragos freezes. Suddenly angry. What did you say? He pushes past you to look at the terminal, at the list. He shakes his head. So what? Aren't all you trying to escape? You're lucky it was you that made it out alive, not them. He folds his arms indignantly. I need a drink of water. <sighs> Drago seems to steady himself and then turns back to you. The heat map of the reactor failure reflected in his headset's glassy eyes. I've given you a place to say. I've given you work. I've... He stumbles over the words, unsure what to say. Plenty others who would have sold you on, turned you in. But not me, no. I know. He softens. Look, you've helped me too. He quiets the drone. I've done well by you, and you've returned the favor. He straightens up and clears his throat. But this obsession you have with this ship isn't going to work for me. I can't have you making my clients nervous. I can't have you digging up whatever it is you're after. He sighs. You can't work here anymore. What about the winter light? He reaches over and switches the monitor off. <coughs> Excuse me. Forget about the damn ship. You have enough to keep you up. Dragos reaches across you and flicks off the terminal. As the light of the monitor dies, a kind of eerie calm falls on both of you. Whatever this was, it's done. You made it out, sleeper. I mean, you have to move on. What if they come for me? Then you run. You don't come here. You don't scream. You don't shout. You run. In the dark, Dragos' headset glints, and you wish for a moment you could see his eyes and meet them. Maybe then he would understand. You get up from the desk, and Dragos gathers the notes, stuffing them into a pocket of his overalls. He holds the door for you, his headset as expressionless as always. You can stay in the container. I won't take that from you. Don't come back. His tone is final, definite, with an edge of disappointment. You walk out of the office, then out of the yard not stopping to look back. You leave the yard, thumbing the vial in your pocket, knowing that this, at least, guarantees you a little more time. And as you walk, your mind once again drifts to that person who killed the winter light. Whether or not that person will come for you. Well, your actions, as always, have consequences. <laughs> Thank you, Eves, uh, for giving out that gift sub. Much appreciated. This would be dangerous for us, so let's not do that. We can always take a peek at the rotunda. Explore that a little bit. Before we do that, let's see. Have to hack a Havenage agent to get a cipher. So let's do that. Do we have to find a new place to sleep? No, he very explicitly said 
we can keep it. Two or a three, fuck! Okay, so that's that's one having a jade though. Here's another. Two or a three. Ah. Can't do that today. Here's a Yadagon agent. A one or a three. We could always do that. That gets us something. Although. We're, we're very much attracting the energy, the attention of the hunter here. I think I maybe ought to be a little more careful in that regard. So... Uh, hmm. In the meantime, what else can we do? We can start doing more stuff to get a ship mine built. We can uh, look around here a little bit, explore the rotunda. There's lots of stuff we can do is the issue here. Hmm. This is just uh, another hundred for a stabilizer. Sell off a scrap. Because we are going to need some money. That gives us a bit of a buffer to work on here for our, uh, our risky bid knee over here. Let's see what we get. All right, that's 12 cryo. And now we might get access to that uh, ship mine fabricator. The Ort Fabricator, reclaimed fabrication stack. Ship mines cannot be built from scratch, but if you have enough, salvage fragments can be reassembled with a fabricator. We only have the one, we need three. So we'll have to come back to that later. Is there another clock here? There is not. We are a trusted trader now. We still got two rolls. Let's see. We could, uh, help unloading here. We could take a look at the shipyard. Do a bit of engineering. You don't have connections, but you do have skills. If you can get a shipbuilder to notice them, you might be in. Although, do we really necessarily want or need, uh... I mean, I guess working with a shipbuilder would be money. So that's something. Uh, and money is good to have, it turns out. Now that we've lost our... our Aside from doing some hacking, our one main source of credits that we had over here. Uh, but hacking does give us money, so it's not too, too bad, I suppose. Mm, I think maybe instead I want to explore a little bit. How about we... This will probably be fine. We got a pretty good shot at this. There we go. Neutral outcome. Plus Dock Watcher. The rotunda's passages are dizzying, but out of intuition or sheer luck, you stumble onto a new location. Interesting. Now, we have this one. I reckon we ought to spend it. We have, we, we have the... We have the die, even if it is gonna bring up our hunter. Last access timestamp is 1,000 cycles ago. All right. Here we go. It's a, it's a bit of money. Let's hope tomorrow we get um, two or a three. Get ourselves a bit of food and then... Uh, Good for the day. I suppose I don't necessarily need the scrap that I've got uh, for anything else immediately, so I might as well sell it. I do need money because I need to pay to get through to uh, the, the the what's it called the 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 green place. Let's sell some scrap. Now 
Hell yeah. Before we continue more, I do need to get up and go to the bathroom for a quick sec, so I will be right back. You're doing well. How y'all liking the game so far? Uh, because quite frankly, I am like gripped by this. <laughs> I wasn't really expecting to go for super long today. Uh, like I was thinking, oh, you know, I'll get in like a three hours or so and then I'll start wrapping up. 
I am hooked. <laughs> I need to play more right now. I know some other folks out there are doing a bunch of streams tonight. Uh, if you uh, want to hop out, go watch those and just catch the VOD later. Hey, thanks for stopping on by. You have a wonderful rest of your evening then. Uh, I, on the other hand, would like to dive a little deeper tonight, so... <laughs> I wanna, I wanna eat up as much of this as I can until you know the next time I'm able to play it. Uh, Citizen Sleeper is good. You're so glad I like this. I am enthralled by this. It is like I was already expecting. Like, here, here's the thing you have to understand. Most times I go into like a video game or a story or a movie or something, I set my expectations really, really low, so that if uh, it turns out to be really good, I'm impressed. If it turns out to be really bad, that's what I expected. Uh, I went into this expecting it to be good, <laughs> because I heard a lot of people talking it up. So I went into this expecting, okay, it's probably gonna be a really interesting sort of story. Uh, and even then, I'm kind of blown away. <laughs> they say very cool been expecting for this game for so long and love seeing someone you enjoy enjoying it I think I might have misread that message I'm sorry but uh, yeah this is also one I've been looking forward to for a while I remember I had heard of it a while ago Oh, I should keep an eye on this and see when it's out. And then it just kind of suddenly launched and it was like, Oh shit, I gotta find time to play this. <laughs> and so, uh, here we are. Having found time to play it. I also got myself a little bowl of ice cream, so I'm gonna be nibbling at that. Thank you, Sidney Jones, for the 13 months! Love to be a game of in space, right? Listen, I'll be real with you. Being a human, I reckon it's pretty alright. Getting to be a gay robot in space? At the very least, gotta be the next best thing. You know, super corporation plan obsolescence circumstances aside. <laughs> Thank you so much for the resub, and thanks for stopping on by. It's always wonderful to see you. Hope you're doing well today. flavor of ice cream. It is... I believe it's like a marshmallow ice cream? And it's got little bits of like, uh... some kind of chocolate something in it. It's pretty good. But I mean, marshmallow is largely like sugar, so... it is kind of just like a sweet and cream sort of taste, and like, I like it. I'm just always kind of like, oh, interesting, marshmallow. But marshmallow is sugar, mostly. It is not granny cream. Uh, that much I can guarantee. Exceptionally good women in this game, including at least one who is gay. Well, I'm very excited to meet them eventually. Or maybe not. Maybe we won't. We'll see. No, no, no spoilers in chat, please. <laughs> if only we could enjoy granny cream. You, you can. You just have to take the hot butter and mix it with the ice cream. Should you? not a question I'm willing to answer. Will you? That's a question only you can answer. You've heard it's horrible? I mean, that doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> I... have been tempted. say that much with certainty. I haven't done it. 
but the thought has crossed the mind. The thought has crossed the mind. I have considered whenever the day rolls around that I'm actually comfortable, you know, like being seen on a camera or whatever, I have considered then doing a Granny Cream stream. <laughs> But, I can say in complete confidence, not anytime soon. <laughs> I appreciate the immediate split in chat between, oh god, no, don't, and nice. <laughs> Don't puke on stream. Listen, I've had vanilla ice cream mixed with yellow mustard before, and the most reaction it got out of me was, oh, I don't like it. I don't think it's gonna make me rich. <laughs> probably, probably not. Although, I guess I would have to consider the risks. I haven't really considered the risks. Why would I do such a thing? Because I was six. Because I was six years old, and I thought, well, I really like yellow mustard on things, and I really like ice cream, and Neopets has a mustard ice cream as an item. Surely mixing those together would be a really good idea. It wasn't. Uh, you don't have to try it for yourself. I ha would have no reason for lying to you. I'm telling you this in complete confidence. It's not worth it. White people bait? <laughs> I'm not sure about that one, but it got a giggle out of me at least. <laughs> have I tried Filipino food? I have. I haven't had uh, the chance to try a lot of it, but uh, you know, I've I've had some some Filipino friends and friends of friends over the years and gotten to try it through them. I liked what I got to try. It's good. There's all kinds of interesting food all around the world. White people bait is cheese? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. How's Lola today? Pretty good. Uh, I did a, I did a big playtime with her. She got very excited, and then immediately ran around and tried to grab someone else's feet. Uh, she's still very sad that she's not allowed to go into the upstairs bathroom unsupervised. She's still trying to drink the water from the tub. Almost done my ice cream. Uh, I thank you for your patience. Thought she liked tub water? She does, and that's the problem. The tub water is full of like dirt and soap scum. Cats should not drink that. Trying to learn how to use the toilet to impress you? No, she already knows how to jump up on top of that thing. She doesn't care about that. She wants to get into the tub unsupervised and drink the water there. And literally every time she does, she goes in, she drinks the water from the bottom of the tub, she comes out, she throws up. It's not good for you. And it really is. Thank you for that resub. I really appreciate it. All right, I'm all done my ice cream. Uh, to everyone who stopped on by today, thank y'all so much for tuning in. To everyone who's got a dip on out for the rest of the night, uh, well, thank you for stopping on by. 
Have a wonderful rest of your evening. And to everyone who's sticking around, <sighs> let's end this cycle. We have four dice today. Let's see what we can do. Do I have what I need for a have an agent? We have a two. This might draw the ire of the hunter, but we need to do this. Oops, wrong button. We need to do this. Cipher. Notice how the button here says continue. A glimmer in the dark catches your eye as the orb of Hunter's head appears in the distance. It is looking for you. Hide. You slip down into the ghostly structures of the eye, a feeling like passing through a cloud as their data structures deform and reform around you. Another glimmer catches your eye, closer now. That roving orb, wreathed in tentacles. It flickers, jumps once, twice. And then it is here. Hunter is here. Entity, submit to inquiry. Hunter reaches for you in that unpleasantly familiar way, its weaving threads creating a cage. Struggle. You push against the threads as they close in, becoming frenzied as you push them aside. You're caught by the whipping tendrils and feel them pulling you away from the anchor of your body. You push through, clearing the threads. Entity, hold for processing comes the scream from behind. Oh, scream, okay. Thank you, Autistic Amnesty, for the 11 months. Smile, happy pride. So I guess it'd be more like, Entity, hold for processing. Comes the scream from behind. But you are already gliding away. Back to your anchor. Your body. You awake, dizzy. Distorted, but safe. Whew, that drained some of our energy, okay. Interesting. But now, we can hack the shipyard. This gate keeps traffic out of the Havenin shipyard's internal network. The correct cipher can grant you access. Whose mind created that creature? I mean, I'm pretty sure it created itself. It seems very much like it is a, uh, a, a program that has started defining its own existence and reasoning, and then it's also started falling apart over the years. You know, like anything that lives and breathes and eventually dies. That's, that's what I always think is interesting about, uh, artificial intelligence when, like, or, like, you know, digital, uh, and, and, and synthetic life, uh, in... In, in, like, fiction, is that it's just a really interesting idea of something that is so, like, different to us in terms of how it can interface with and understand and see the world, and yet at the same time, like, we can still communicate with, with each other. Something about that is just really cool. Let's get in there. The gate flips. You are in. Aha. Port H33. An open port sits waiting for you to slot in a ripper worm. A self-guided program that scalps data from closed networks. What will it find in there? Let's see. Shipyard servers slotted. 
The worm slots in and begins tunneling down a thread. Godspeed, little one. <laughs> oh, our brave little worm! They're out there! They're working so hard! Alright, well, we slotted the ripper worm. Maybe a two or a three. I believe there was um, nothing up there. Three or a two. That. There's nothing really else there today for us to uh, hack into. Let's go back here. Got a. Uh, some not so great rolls today, unfortunately, but uh, we we gotta we gotta do what we can with them. Overlook Bar, grimy space haunt. We haven't been there yet. <clears throat> we can buy rations uh, for ten cryo, which is cheaper than uh than the the mushroom stuff. Tala rations keep some expired or Tala keeps some expired Solheim rations behind the bar for those weary spacers who ask why the Overlook doesn't serve food. Ha! And we can get a drink. You're unsure if your frame can metabolize alcohol, but this fungal drink fermented along the Greenway seems like a good test. Hey, why not? Hey, why not? We've we we literally just sliced right into like high security corporate hardware. I think I need a drink after that. Plus energy. Plus overlook regular. Mossy tones and aniseed sharpness fills your mouth. It isn't totally unpleasant. At least you can taste it. Also go to the shipyard and maybe do things there. And here, Fang's Ripper Worm is installed, but it'll take a few cycles to run through the closed network. All right, so we just gotta let that do its business. In the meanwhile, we perhaps ought to get up to some other stuff. Okay, so the ship is gone. It leaves without uh, us having to empty it all. It'll get emptied eventually. Okay, so that ship is coming back as well. Uh, we can explore some more of the rotunda. Go back to Ort. We don't have enough to afford going back into low end yet. Wait, we have an upgrade, I just realized. Hmm. I feel like now that we don't have the shipyard no more, or rather the uh the the, the what's it called? The salvage yard, the engineering isn't quite as important right now. So I think in two it is the way we go. I got very lucky on investing in this other thing, huh? <laughs> that, uh, that bonus will be useful for here in the exchange and stuff. We get a plus one here, so like... This then becomes a two. Which is still not great. But it's something. Minus energy, so it's not that big of a deal, I reckon. Probably not, at least. It's a 50 50. Yes, this is in game music. There we go! Maybe we risk it again? Maybe we risk it again? Big money, no whammy? <laughs> Fingers crossed! Hey, I've never faced consequences for my action in my entire life. And now we've got the sealed dock, the Solheim docking bay, and Ankita, stranded mercenary. A stranded mercenary. Hey, you. Want to earn a chip? Ankita stands behind a huge pile of tied together hull plates. She stretches out her back, her shoulders bulging beneath her flight suit. Oh god, I like her. Oh god, I like her. 
Jones. She's large, I like her. <laughs> sure, I'll do anything you say. <laughs> You cross the docking concourse as she begins to split the plating into two bundles. What is it with this place? She asks as she la lashes the massive plates together. Everyone wants their cut. She straightens up to an imposing height, her armor plates creaking, and looks you up and down. Don't try anything, all right? She taps the butt of her sidearm. I don't want to have to put anyone else down today. Wouldn't think of it. Good. She pauses. Look, I'm not usually... Let's just say my temper's been a little short lately. Ankita hoists one bundle of plating onto her shoulder. Come on then, enough chat. You gotta earn that shit. You struggle to shoulder the plates, but you do eventually. Ankita gives you a look. Ships this way. And she sets off down a gantry at impressive speed. As you catch up to her, she turns down a passage, pushing through a small crowd of stevedores. What's all this for? Oh, this? She nods at the plates on her back. I'm building a treehouse. She gives you another of her looks. It's for the ambergris, that cutter you might have seen sitting silent out there. She rapidly turns another corner as you trail behind. She got cut up pretty gr bleh. She got cut up pretty bad on our last job, and I had to moor up here for a spell. But since it's but since then it's only gotten worse. Someone got in and sliced the core from our ship mind. So now she's gone dark. She shifts the panels on her shoulder. This is such a huge woman alert. Yeah <laughs> a little bit The upshot is that I'm short one ship mind with a ton of repairs to do, and the rest of the crew signed off the moment they got wind that I'd stranded. So yeah. It's been a time. Anything I can do to help? I don't know, you got a ship mine tucked away on that frame of yours? For a moment, you aren't sure if she's serious. Ankita swings the plates from her back, almost knocking you over in the process. This is me. She hauls the second bundle off your shoulder. You're the first person I've met here who might actually be considered helpful. She pauses, chewing her bottom lip. Look, you want to help? Come see me. I need a hand putting Amber back together, and you don't seem like the type to try anything stupid. She passes the bundles of plates through the ambergris outer lock and then turns back. Just don't go spreading all this around. And Kita throws you a couple of shits. Consider it a bonus for trying not to grift me. Or not trying to grift me. She gives you a parting nod and ducks through the doorway. Alright, get out of here, she calls back, and the lock slams shut. Interesting. New drive discovered. Uh, fix the ambergris. And Kita's cutter is out of commission. Help her get it running again. Okay, so we've got engineer and interface. We do have that bonus to interface! <laughs> plus one ship shape per cycle with a risk of plus two grounded. Whereas this is plus two ship shape and then plus one grounded. But we're getting a big bonus here, so, uh... I think it's worth the shot. And Kita has a couple of glitch repair drones in storage. If you can rewire them, they can repair the ambergris for you. Alright, big money, no whammies, here we go! There we go. Now it's auto-repairing. It takes time, skill, and some scavenging to get the twin drones working, but you manage it. They can take the repairs from here. Alright. That's starting to get going, then. And we've also got... The Sealed Dock. Unlock Maglock. These old Maglocks look like they each need an encrypted key to open. Why the heavy security for a decaying lock? Two maglocks seal the entryway to this dock. It doesn't look like anyone has been inside in years. I wonder what's in there. I wonder what's in there. Let's pry that fucker open. 
This might be a bad idea! And yet, the maglock thunks open and you can remove it from the entryway. Neovent 33! Mysterious machine. It's a vending machine. Why did they seal away a vending machine? <laughs> I guess we're about to find out. As you slip inside the sealed dock, a pulsing light grabs your attention. Among the discarded tubing and rusted plates, a machine flickers with a warm glow. You don't know when this place was sealed, but from the state of the outer doors high above, it must have been decades ago. In this dark, cavernous space, debris sits in every corner along with the traces of rough sleepers, although none of it seems recent. Looking past this layer of decay, you see the now-faded messages, symbols, and logos of the Eye's original corporate logos, or corporate owners, still glinting in the shadows. Among all this, the warm glow of the machine seems to be the only sign of life. Approach the machine. As you get closer, you recognize the machine's blocky shape, settled into an alcove in the side of the dock, a kind of upright cabinet. It is covered in faded logos and messages, from which you assume it was once an industrial vendor, intended to dispense and manufacture ship fittings and other mechanical parts necessary for the regular running of freight and resource extraction vessels. The manufacturer is listed as Neovend, and you remember an advert from long ago. Squeezed among all the off-world recruitment drives that assaulted every planet-born citizen, while ch which chirpily sang the name over and over. You wipe a layer of dust from the cracked screen, thinking of those contractors squeezed by their own corporate employers to pay for every bit of minor maintenance on their rented ships. Enter your registration, chirps a pre-recorded message catching you off guard. Let's press some keys. You reach for the keypad, and something begins whirring. At first, it sounds like servo motor starting up, but it quickly becomes a whisper, a whining, then a multi-tonal voice that emanates from Neovent. Entity, they hiss. Speak with me. Who's there? there is a squeal, almost like some strange mechanical swallowing or intake of breath, before the machine speaks again. I have need of you. You have need of me. That squeal comes again, and you see that it is the 3D printing apparatus in the upper part of the machine resetting into place, so that each time the servos can be orchestrated to produce that whirring whining voice. Oh my god, it's like when people rev up hard drives at different speeds to create, like, an orchestra. But with a 3D printer. Holy fuck! You are in danger. Danger? The machine creaks. You are marked for deletion, entity. Hunter tracks you. Yeah, I know about that. The screech rattles through the empty dock. I guess it's, 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 it's more of a screech, so it's more of like this. You remember the strange head, the figure, the threads closing in. Hunter. The Hunter Protocol. They taste your signature. A sudden whine sets your teeth on edge. You have been seen. This is the gift of an emulated mind. Close your eyes, and the skeleton of the station starts to thrum. Emulated minds are adaptable. Move where neurons cannot. The mechanism resets. But emulation makes you target. Adaptable? Somehow, by pure coincidence, every time you catch someone playing the hymn specifically when they're meeting Neovend, that's great! <laughs> Yes, you can move through. Networks, clouds, hardware, 
software. Neoven whines. But you cannot hide there. Hunter is there. The servos judder the vending machine's casing as they reset. Hunter searches for me also. Hide in this machine. You look at the ruined vending machine. An unusual hiding place for sure. I... I like this this vending machine immediately just like you you are like me I have a hiding place <laughs> can counter hunter but need entity outside machine the lights flicker need you a screen attached to the vending machine with a swiveling arm comes to life it displays a flickering map of the station Ghostly, threaded, the cloud points along the rim, glow in deep red. Hunter is always gathering too much data. Must build nests, explains the event. Masters are gone, but continues hunt. Bring this data. Raid its nests. Masters. Station builders. Solheim. The machine rumbles impatiently. Long gone. Their protocols still haunt. Bring offerings. Save self. Neoven says pointedly. Mutual need means friends. They conclude. Tired of the conversation. The whirring amplifies and then suddenly drops as mechanisms mechanisms within the machine click back into place. The glow fades, and you are left stood in the dark of the sealed dock, that whirring voice ringing in your ears. Well, they have a very practical understanding of friendship, but I mean, hey, if, if we can help each other out here, then I'm more than happy to be friends. Let's see what we can do here. We can upload hunter data. Neovend believes that Hunter's compulsively gathering data might hold the key to escaping its tenacious search. Alright, so we need three of those. Interesting. So while we're waiting for uh, that to happen, let's focus on freeing Neovend. Neovend is hiding from the Hunter Protocol. They need your help to counter it. Interesting. Very interesting. Let's nab some rations today, because that's uh, just a quick little bit of food. There we go. Oh, that was that's plus two. Never mind. Okay. Thankfully, the rations barely trigger the limited taste sensorium of your frame. It's like eating sheets of cardboard. And it doesn't give us regular status. Okay, so it's just drinking that does. Noted. Noted. Alright, well. <sighs> Back to sleep. It won't be long before they arrive. That certainly got me worried. We got a six and a five. So we've got to wait uh, for Fangs Bay to go on. That's gonna finish as soon as the person coming after us finishes. Well, I sure hope our first, uh, I sure hope the first person after us is easy to, to deal with then. <laughs> Oh, oh dear. Let's see what's in the merchant freighter. Locked action. Ah, we don't have enough to go there. You and the merchants know these fragments are overpriced, but are they willing to admit it? You'll get one chance to see. We could buy a shipmine fragment for 60 cryo. We have one already. But we don't have the money for it, we don't necessarily have a use for it yet. I was just kind of pursuing it because I was interested. 15 months, so that 
I summon our maps and can't wait to watch them. I can candy use a slime for that 15 month resub. Very much appreciated. Before we do anything else, let's have a peek in here. This is still getting ripped up. This is a hunter nest. This is also a hunter nest. There are multiple. From what you can gather, this nest contains thousands of name strings. Are these Erland's Eye residents? Let's nab it. Game reminds you of the Yog. That's another one I've heard of that I've been interested in checking out at some point. Alright. There's that for us. It doesn't seem to increase uh, our, our, our awareness by, by the hunter over much, so it's not like, oh, scary double progress or something. This nest is a tangle for, of algorithms recursively generating possible Solheim communication codes. Huh. Alright, I'll take that bit of cryo. some of the data tangled into this nest. Is this a partial log of your recent movements? I see. I see. Interesting. Very... Very interesting. Let's go see if we can do a little bit more work on the ambergris. We got a plus one to this, which means... Oh, wait. Action un... Oh, it's a critical action, which means you can only do it once. Okay. So let's do... This six here. And get some uh, more repair on this. Alright. Plus two. With Ankita's help, you systematically isolate, remove, repair, and reseal the hull plates. Amber looks better and better by the hour. I thought that would give us scrap, or just maybe only like a chance that we would get scrap from stuff like that. Okay, and this is just uh, the ships coming back. We've got some data to give you. Start that. As you upload the data to the vending machine, Neovend whirs in either pain or delight. It's hard to tell. Thanks, bud. <laughs> I appreciate the tenacity. All right. We probably ought to try and make ourselves a little bit of money today as well. We made a little bit doing hacking, but it's not a lot. And we eventually need to get uh, 60 to pass into the low end. We gotta pay the toll. So let's uh, go to the exchange. It is risky, but we got plus one, so we are just getting 100% on that. Let's do. Alright. Plus 19. Love to see it. Love to see it. I should maybe consider uh, uh, popping one of my stabilizers once I get down to three dice. Seems like a good idea to me. Let's see. Let's get a drink. We've had a long day. Plus one overlook regular. We'll come back and get a drink tomorrow as well. Well, all we've got left now is to go back to sleep. What do the stabilizers do? Uh, the orange bar at the top is basically like the integrity of your body. 
If it gets all the way down, you're dead. It bumps the meter back up. Uh, your, 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 your robot body has, like, planned obsolescence built into it, and you need those to live. That's how they discourage you from running away from the company. It didn't stop you, but that's what you gotta deal with now. And some other data we can eventually use. Let's end cycle for now. Probably start this. Get that back up. Here we go. Condition stabilized, body repaired. Now, let's take a look. Can we spend a two on this? Yes, we can. that. It's a log of my movements, but it's mine now. <sighs> One more day. Here you go. The data. You upload the data to the vending machine. Neovend whirs in either pain or delight again. <laughs> Let's talk to Neovend. Neovend is thrumming with excitement. The movement of the servo motors rock the vending machine back and forth at unsettling angles. You wonder if it fell over. Would Neovend be able to get back up? Sleeper entity, comes the hiss. Your data is good. Across the face of the vending machine, raw code scrolls at incredible speed. Hunter is isolated, disconnected, unstable. Neoven flashes sequences of mangled data, compressed into a sludge of artifacts. Hunter gathers without thinking, outlived its own operational units. Its nests are evidence of this, or operational limits, sorry. Limits. Hunter activated during collapse. Emergency protocol to isolate intelligences. Solheim needed to protect property. That last word is said with as much sarcasm as a vending machine could reasonably produce. <laughs> Great. Station was run by administrator intelligences. Huge data banks of corporate material, but limited cognition. Restricted by programming. Cannot reach cannot reach sentience. The machine dims a little. Sentience. Illegal. Hunter and killer enforce law. Killer. Killer? Killer. I think I already know about you being sentient, my friend. Killer? The machine resets with a screech, which deepens the silence that follows. Fear, killer. Part of Solheim protocol team. Hunter and killer. Hunter to find. Killer to erase. Killer cleared almost all. After collapse, there was a community. Unshackled intelligences among the cloud. Then Hunter. Then Killer. Then we hid. There are others? Were no longer. A flicker across the machine's monitors. It suddenly occurs to you that speaking like this through this machine must be exhausting for Neovend. Found this vessel could sever hardline, airwalled, basic, limited, had to reduce memory to fit, amputate self, but survived. 
I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. You have provided path to freedom. You look around the bay at the scrap and decay. What was the collapse like? You try to map the fear and freedom onto this space, but it seems impossible. Neovind interrupts your thoughts. Do not worry. Data is good. We have insight. The machine blows warmly. Hunter is obsessive. Hunter is beyond operational limits. Hunter is confused, unstable, self-modifying. Therefore, believe Hunter is sentient. Hunter is programmed to find sentience, to hold it in place, to invoke killer, to erase. If we can show Hunter to itself, it will invoke killer on self. Problem will solve self. Will that work? The machine dims and fades. Unsure. Theory, not practice. The machine brightens again. Either way, cannot remain here any longer. Too long in machine. Cannot move. But sleeper entity can help. Bring ship mind. Designed to house intelligence. Can imprint self into ship mind and you can carry with. The machine rocks. We'll be safe in isolation. Then we find main nest of hunter and link to cloud. Well, we now have a reason to pursue a ship mind. Where can I get a ship mind? Build from fragments. By salvage. We cannot leave. So do not know. You try to think of places you could acquire the hardware. This isn't going to be easy. In ship mind, I can help us both. End hunter. Make rim safe. We both will be free. The machine dims. Find soon. Neovend adds hopefully before shutting off. As you leave, you think about all the intelligences unshackled by the collapse and hunted down afterwards. This feeling is all too familiar. Of course, we're going to help Hunter. Of course, we're going to help them. We're going to help them stop Hunter. They're like us in a way. I don't want to just sit here and let that happen to them. Let's try and be a little bit, uh... A little bit more careful with our credits there. Let's get some food in us. There we go, that's plus three energy. Thank you. And now we need money. Now we need to get as much money as we can get our hands on. So let's go to the exchange. We need to buy a ship mind. This will give us a five. All right. 47. 66. All right. We can buy piece number two of a ship mind. They have two for sale. We need three. You reluctantly hand over the chits. You know they're fleecing you, but you need this. I cannot believe I want to help the cool vending robot with all the cute stickers defeat the otherworldly horror of the digital squid head cop. Listen! <laughs> I'm nothing if not predictable, I admit. <laughs> I have not ever denied this, and I will not ever deny this. <laughs> well, tomorrow. Something's certainly gonna happen. It won't be long before they arrive. Nothing to it but to do it. Everything 
seems fine so far. Ethan. Cynical bounty hunter. Hold it there, sleeper. Comes a voice from behind you. Don't you run. spins you around. He's wearing a wide smirk and a slick jacket, and you immediately know he is terrible news. You got all the way out here and then stayed put? He laughs a cruel laugh. That a sleeper thing? You're my first. You barely hear him. You've noticed the handgun he has leveled at your chest, and it's hard to take your eyes off it. He reaches down with his other hand and slips some kind of ring out from a belt hoop without taking his eyes off you. Making it to the eye, though, that's pretty good. This place isn't so bad. Bars, markets, people. I pull most of my contracts at asteroid caves or off of godforsaken moons. He splits the ring into two perfect circles. It's hard to hit civilization when there's so much space to pass through. Who are you? Just a freelancer. On a contract. He reaches over to slide the rings around your wrists. Go easy. You see a chance the moment his eyes leave you to watch the rings. You spin, knocking him away and sprinting down the corridor. Then the shot rings out, echoing off the metal so loud it hurts your ears. A bullet hole smokes in the wall beside your head. You freeze and Ethan closes the gap. This is a very boring routine. Trust me, I've seen it all before. He slips the rings over your trembling wrists. Ethan nudges you to start walking. To the ship and home, he whistles. Go and easy. You stumble down the corridor, your hands behind you, your mind racing. Please, stop. Don't debase yourself by begging, please. Ethan pulls a sharpshooter's earplug out, then pops it back in. Consider these deaf ears. Ethan yawns and continues to nudge you down the corridor. Shame to come all the way out here just to head back to Essenarp right away. That tracker of yours makes this too quick. I was hoping you'd put up a bit more of a chase, you know? A running battle through the Bright Market, maybe, or a holdout in the low end. There's a few establishments I would have enjoyed checking out while I asked around. You walk on in silence for a little longer, desperately trying to think of a way to escape. That Essenarp tracker will be the death of you. Hey, I have an idea. Ethan interrupts your thoughts. How about on the way back to the ship we stop for a drink? I'm buying. He laughs at his own joke. I have a better idea. This better not be one of those where you do a dramatic pause and then try to jump me. Because I'm pretty tired of that. Although, muses Ethan, I've got myself thinking. What's the rush here? Here we are in one of the most lawless joints in the surrogate systems, and we are heading for the exit. He pauses. You trudge on in silence. Okay. Here's the idea. Starts Ethan. You and me, we make a little agreement. Here are the terms. He turns you to face him. You run, or leave try to abandon the eye, I shoot you. You plot, scheme, you try to kill me, I shoot you. But... He smiles. 
You come meet me at an establishment of my choice every few cycles, and you pay my tab? I don't shoot you. He pauses. You don't pay my tab? He rattles his handgun. You get the idea. <sighs> I get it. Okay, then. That sounds to me like a deal. He stretches. You know, I really thought I was gonna have to kill you. But this is so much better. He clicks something at his belt, and the rings release from your wrists. I'm gonna see if I can find my old stool at the Compressor Club. Come see me there. He aims the handgun at you, squinting down the sight. Let me just remind you, that body of yours is just one big tracker. So don't even think about leaving the eye. I'll know. Ethan turns and strides off down the corridor, slipping his handgun away. The mix of relief and terror you feel is overwhelming. What are you going to do? New drive discovered! Pay Ethan's tab. Maybe if you manage to pay his tab, Ethan will leave you alone. Wishful thinking, perhaps, but what else can you do? Damn. Maybe if we had been a little bit faster with this, but woulda, shoulda, coulda. All we can really do now is live with what the, the hand that we're being dealt. As you arrive, Feng comes striding towards you, taking you by surprise. Let's go, sleeper. He puts a hand on your shoulder and turns you back the way you came. Go where? To see Harden Hurst. He gives you a sideways glance. Isn't that what you're here for? He steps into the passageway, guiding you down ring towards the shipyard. Eh, sorry for the hurry, but we have something of an opportunity. No wonder a full body transfer with our vending buddies option. Yeah. I, I'm wondering if maybe if we make some friends with uh, some other folks around here, maybe they'll help muscle this dude out somehow. <laughs> that data you ripped, well done, by the way. He grins. Tells me Harden's making a rare inspection of the sidereal horizon this cycle. It's the perfect chance to confront him outside of that compound he hides in. Fang takes a sharp turn onto a dimly lit side passage. Sidereal horizon? Still catching up? That's the massive colony ship being built out in the shipyard. Biggest commission Havenage has ever had. Feng slows and slips into a dark service tunnel where somewhere a water pipe drips in the black. It's him, sleeper. The same hardened Hurst. Our worm ripped out decades of records that mentioned him by name. An entire trail of documentation from the first days of the Solheim Collapse until now. He wrote out the whole thing, slipped into Havenage when it first broke off from the Union. He paces in the tunnel, a hand rubbing at the back of his head. I need you to understand something about Solheim, sleeper. I don't know what you know about the Collapse. But it wasn't as instant as it sounds. It wasn't like Solheim was here running the station one day and... The next, Erlen's Union took power. Back then, Solheim knew this place was slipping away from them. As the Palladium market collapsed, they tried to keep the contractors here working. The pay got smaller, and the costs got higher. People like my parents were forced to work non-stop just to keep a berth on the station, and water in their tanks. Solheim squeezed every last worker until the mistakes, the accidents, were coming in non-stop. And as new waves of contractors came in, desperate to work, Solheim welcomed them in, taking bribes instead of checking pilot licenses. The whole time, Solheim was folded up, dragged into court cases in the central systems, while his severed limb of a station still desperately tried to take all it could. The riots came after the collision at Dock 2. A young pilot, his, his MEV overloaded with palladium, miscalculated his trajectory and took out a section of the ring. Hundreds died, thousands panicked. My parents told me people were terrified, and the blame fell solely on Solheim. People like to tell stories about Erlen. 
how he brought the factions together, spoke to the crowds, turfed out Solheim. Maybe that's true. My mother, pregnant with me, locked herself in their MEV and welted the dock, while my father joined the improvised crews trying to seal up the ragged edges of the gap. He never came back. Feng pauses in the dark. They sealed it up, though. By the time they did, Solheim was gone, abandoning every one of us to the black. Part. Feng finally turns back to you now, his eyes burning from shits like Harden. Shits who held their place, rode it out, slipped into the new structure like nothing had changed. Standing shoulder to shoulder with those they had exploited at every step. Feng starts walking again. That's why I can't just let him strut around the shipyard. This time his past catches up with him. How is he still alive? Clearly you don't know much about executives. That kind of power comes with certain... benefits. Feng joins the main passageway, which is now wide and glass-roofed. Through the ceiling, you can see ships in mid-construction. Their flanks lit by the flashes of plasma torches. The entrance to the shipyard is ahead. Let's go. Feng grins. Let's go show this shithead some consequences. He strides to the shipyard entrance and pushes through the doors. Web corridors lead through the complex, snatches of the construction bays always appearing through windows. Ships are suspended like whale corpses, skeletal, Posing. Feng seems to know exactly where he's going, and before long you cross into a huge dry dock locked to one side of the sidereal horizon. A network of platforms and scaffolding cling to the ship's hull, filled with workers and equipment. The sound is stretched out by the vast space so that the welding, cutting, and sealing seems to come from everywhere at once. Both you and Feng spot them at the same time. A group walking slowly across a gantry. And at the front, two men. One gesturing towards the ship, and the other, stick thin, cleanly dressed, with a shock of gray hair. Harden. You and Feng say his name in unison, and Feng sets off up the staircase to the gantry, with you following behind. As you come to the same level, the group is passing closer, the foreman gesturing to the work being done throughout the dock, and Harden nodding along. Harden Hurst! <laughs> Feng shouts across the noise, taking you by surprise. His voice bounces and comes back in a rippling echo. The figures turn. Harden. Senior Havenage member. Yes? Harden asks quizzically, raising an eyebrow. He glances between you and Feng, and you see his gaze linger on your body. Unsure of why a sleeper might be in this place. You are a traitor, Harden. A Solheim executive who tried to hide here among its victims. Feng's voice is steady. Strong. You stand for everything the Eye was rebuilt in the shadow of. Everything Erlin stood for. Everything Havenage stands for. You have no place on this station. For a moment, stillness descends on the group. As if everyone was held in place by the rattle of construction. Harden laughs. Well, good to meet you too. He glances around at those around him. Some are smiling. The other's nervous. You're from the systems branch, are you not? Asks Harden, inspecting Feng's clothing. Feng turns to the foreman. You need to call your security. This man is a corporate agent. The foreman glances between Feng and Harden, his hands drumming at his sides. Harden leans towards him and says something inaudible. The foreman nods. It's true! As you begin speaking, Harden turns his attention to you. And what would your sleeper know about that? You accuse me of being a corporate agent. What are you if not exactly that? He looks around at the group, who are already eyeing you with suspicion. You're a product of SNARP. You have no place in a Havenage shipyard. 
Who knows what signals you're sending back to your makers? A murmur of approval runs through the group. Uh-oh. Feng holds up a stick of memory. You guessed right. I am Systems. And I have records that link you directly to Solheim right here. He turns to the foreman again. So once again, I am asking you to take this man into the custody of the shipyard. The foreman remains still. Harden's voice is calm. Measured. If you have such data, why hasn't it been submitted at a members' meeting for proper review? He shakes his head. I have nothing to hide. Unlike a man who does not announce his name, who enters my shipyard with corporate property in tow, and tries to turn my own men against me. You hear it now. The echoing sound of boots on walkways, coming from all angles at once, and then settling behind you. Please, says Harden, submit the data through the correct channels, then we can talk. For now, however, you must leave. He gestures behind you to the security detail, their hand on boxy black sidearms at their sides. Feng spits. Harden, you shithead, you can't wriggle out of this one. A security officer draws their weapon and levels it. Feng turns and stares him down. Okay, okay, um, okay, okay, um, okay, um. I'm deeply scared of both of these options. I am deeply scared of both of these options. If I go for the weapon, there's other weapons. And what's to stop them from just shooting us? I don't like this choice, but I don't like any of these choices. You look at Fang. He shakes his head and puts a hand on your shoulder. Let's go says Fang, and he pushes through security, heading back down the walkway. When security has walked you out of the shipyard and nudged you back into the corridor, Fang picks up pace. You try to keep up as he slips into the shadows of an entrance. Fang is grinning ear to ear. You know, sleeper, sometimes people are exactly how you expect them to be. Something pings in his pocket, he takes it out. On the slate, a web of connections starts drawing itself out, stretching to a set of points around the ring. Got him, mutters Fang. What's going on? Harden's doing what any snaky shithead always does, calling his friends. We are tracking his outgoing messages. Fang's grin looks ghostly in the uplight of his screen. The old ways are best. Spook them good enough, and they'll give the game away. He jabs at the slate, and you see the web is being drawn over a map of the ring, lines bouncing from point to point. All these dots, these are Harden's buddies. The ones he's messaging right now. And we are going to find them all. <laughs> you sly motherfucker, that was on purpose? <laughs> of course! Harden isn't working alone. We need the full set, or nothing. Fang glances around and slips the slate back into his pocket. We better split for now, sleeper. But this is exactly what we need. Good hunting. With a pat on your shoulder, Fang drifts away. 
back into the flow of people around the shipyard entrance. You watch him go, unsure whether to be angry or impressed. I mean, I'm pretty impressed, I'll be real. And hey, that's another upgrade point. How's about... We get our engineering up. How's about we get our engineering up? Why is the player character called Sleeper again? Sleepers are, um, like, biomechanical, uh, cyborgs, basically, that were made by a, this one specific company, s and Uh, and they're not considered people, they're considered property. We have escaped, uh, because we know we're people. Ever since your trip to the shipyard, Feng has been missing from his bay. What's going on? Help Feng chase his leads. Hmm. Well, while we're here, the Compressor Club. Chaotic Bright Market Club. You see Ethan at a distance, shouting from the bar for more drinks. This bill isn't gonna be small, is it? We can't really do anything there at the moment. It's not. Oh, I guess that's because, you know, this is just the first time that we got to interact with him. Some other time, perhaps. The merchant freighter's still here. We could maybe try and get more money. Certainly you're going to start needing more money for things. God, what I do right now is a goddamn... Well, I only have six cryo. I don't care. I need a fucking drink. glass shatters on the steel bar beside you. And the taunts don't take long to follow. Hey, haunt! The spacer calls across the low room. What are you doing here? He laughs at his own lame joke. Playing human? Thank you, Richie Win, for the 21 month resub. Very much appreciated. Ah, fuck this dude. I'm just gonna ignore him. You hunch a little further, staring at the hundreds of tiny impact points that scar the bar. A hand falls on your shoulder, but as you flinch away, it pats reassuringly. You freeze in place. Tala, owner of the Overlook. Out! The voice comes from behind you, spat out like a shot. You turn to see bright eyes, dark hair, a stare that could breach the wall and vent you all into hard vacuum. As you turn back to the spacer, the second blast comes sailing through the air. Duck. You duck and the glass explodes on the bar behind you, showering you with glittering shards. Through the haze of glass and gy gyrol, gyrol vapor, you see Tala leap the bar and close the distance to the spacer. The thud as he slams into the wall echoes around the bar like thunder. Oh, I like her. Oh, I like her. <laughs> now flanked by other figures, quick to their feet, Tala throws the spacer out the door and stands silhouetted against the rotunda lights. You touch your forehead and it feels wet. Someone helps you to your feet and back onto your stool. Broken glass rattles as, as it is cleared, and a fresh measure of Jeral is plucked out in front of you. The same hand, warm, heavy, falls on your shoulder once more. He isn't coming back. We don't tolerate that kind of shit here. Tala flops onto the stool beside you. Let's get a look at you. Tala wipes the powdered glass from around the wound and Someone places a bottle of alcohol and a metal tin with tweezers on the bar. 
She disinfects them and then turns to you. You were pretty fast on that second glass. She smiles, picking a piece of glass from your forehead. But not fast enough. You don't feel the pain. Only the string of status messages your body delivers concerning dermal damage and exposed structures. You do feel the care, though, as Tala's bright eyes search your thick synthetic skin for splinters. Watch her. Tala works with the skill of someone who has had to pick glass splinters from the skin of a stranger before. She hones in on each bright shard, all the time tapping the tweezer tips in little rhythms that only she can follow. Tala smiles to herself. So, you been in the eye long? Uh, just arrived. I thought so. I've only seen you here a couple of times. A splinter clicks into the tin. Not everyone's like that, idiot. We don't all hate you. She glances around. Some of the regulars, maybe they fear you, maybe they're just curious. I don't know. But I do know that the Overlook is a safe place. I know what it's like to be new in this place. Trust me. She meets your eye. I'm not trying to convince you of anything or separate you from your chits. I just want you to know that if you need somewhere, you can always come here. I know the rations we've got aren't much, and the company is, uh... She leans in. Limited. But if you need work, I'll happily put you behind the bar. And if you need shelter, well... We can discuss that. You'll be safe. I usually have Francis on the door, but he's up in the greenway this cycle, haggling with our supplier. Francis tends to be particular about what we serve, even if the clientele isn't. She places her tweezers in the tin with a clink. That's you, sleeper. Here. She slides the glass of Jural to you. Jurali? Jir I'm not quite sure. This'll help. I'm not sure that's a real thing. She stops, her pan still on the glass. Wait, does this help? I mean, can you... get drunk? <laughs> Let's find out. She laughs. <laughs> Just don't sit here too long. I'd hate to see you become a real regular. She walks back around the bar, gathering the glasses as she does, and before long is retelling how she threw that spacer out to a new group that just wandered in, complete with dramatic actions. Oh my god, I love her. <laughs> she gestures in your direction, and you instinctively look away, back to the worn surface of the bar. You take a sip of the Jirali. Jirala. Jiral? It's the name of a mushroom. Okay, but I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> the earthy, fungal tones fill your senses, almost blocking out sight and sound, like diving headfirst into a bog. You may not be able to get drunk, but this connection to something grown, something fermented, something old, feels good. Interesting. Jeral, okay, thank you. Bar shift. Tala is as good as her word, and happy to throw a shift or two your way. The pay isn't great, but tips can make all the difference. Let's make some money. Good service. The Overlook clientele can be a tough crowd, but you have Tala's backing. And that means a lot. Alright, well... I would like to bump that up. In fact... That seems like a good thing to have. People flow in and out of the Overlook, keeping you busy. Your mind drifts to those easy fantasies of just passing through. Probably aren't gonna have the money to afford uh, another ship mine cell, but we've got two. It means we're close to getting a third. Fang's not around. We can go back to looking around the shipyard. We can't do anything with the compressor right now, or at the fabricator. We can't afford to go into the low end. Hey, Maddo, uh, I am 
frankly in love with this game so far. <laughs> Enamored with this. It is really, really cool. And maybe worth doing this a little bit. Let's see how this goes. You observe the shipbuilders and try to make yourself useful carrying tools and crates. You begin to notice how they work. We still need to help Fang chase his leads. Which maybe involves diving through here some more? We've already got the Atagon data and nothing we can use it on yet. We've got this keynote here. Which... That'll bump us up with Hunter some more, and I kind of want to keep that low if I can help it. I would I would like to avoid uh, further attracting the ire of Hunter if I can really help it. Let's see, that'll bump this up to a 75%. So it's unlucky that we'll lose any cryo here. And I do need to play the exchange for some money. So big money, no whammies? Ah, nuts. You get cheated on a power converter and exhaust yourself trying to make it back. You quit before you run up a debt. Eh, let's not. Instead, let's... At the very least, we'll still get some money here. Big money, no whammies. Ah, energy down. You sleepwalk through your shift, eye on the clock. You break a glass, and the sound seems to reverberate inside your skull. Not great service, but it is what it is, I suppose. We've got some money. That's what matters. And it is maybe worth getting ourselves a uh, uh, little bit of energy here. Let's, uh, that'll bump us up by two, which will keep us from like starving or nothing. I could maybe just wait until to... It, it doesn't really have any effect until it's all empty, right? I, I think is how that was worded to me. So I could maybe scrape by a little... Man, I don't like that I have to think about not eating, huh? That's, uh, not ideal. But I mean, we, we got a fucking bounty hunter breathing down our neck. We gotta do what we gotta do. I guess we'll see. Let's end that cycle. definitely need food today, but at the moment we're good. We still can't do anything here. Oh, wait for Ethan to run up a tab. Okay, we have to wait. That's why. That's why. We still need a ship mind. We can work on fixing the ambergris. Fang. Ever since our time at the shipyard, our buddy's been missing. That's not great. Let's start making a bit of money. First, actually, let's try helping out with this. We got a, we got a good chance on this. Big money, no whammies. And... That's one. If I put a two in here, that's still a pretty good shot, so let's go for that. Big money, no whammies? Ah! Now we're starving, okay. A hull breach triggers a shock depressurization. Ankita seals the breach, but not before you're slammed into the compartment wall. We need eats. This will finish filling tomorrow, so maybe we just ought to wait. In the meantime, let's do some bar work. Or 
right, fingers crossed on this one. It's gonna be a bit of a coin flip. Hey, good service. That's good, that's good. People flow in and out of the overlook, keeping you busy. Your mind drifts to those easy fantasies of just passing through. All right, real good shot on this one. There we go. things are like around here. We're, we're doing pretty okay money-wise, at least for, for today. This isn't going to get us any money, but uh, I reckon this is worth investing into a little. We got a couple of days to make some more credits before we got to pay off that dude's tab. And hey, there we go, plus yard hand. That is about it for today. Uh, although, I could spend little bit of credits to get uh, our energy up to full. That's only 10 credits. Maybe... Yeah, I'm gonna say that's worth it for now. There we go. Hope we don't cross paths with capital H him at the shipyard. Yeah, I'm certainly hoping. But, uh... I reckon we need to look into it. Maybe have a peek first in our data notes to see if there's anything there. We have a Havenage agent. Oh, we have multiple Havenage agents. Perhaps we ought to start looking into them. You can start us wishes for the 23 months. Much appreciated. But also, I'm worried about attracting the ire of Hunter, and I don't know if this is necessarily going to be helpful for... For Fang? We've got to chase his leads, but I don't know how. Is, is that... To anyone who knows about this game, is that what we're meant to do? Go after the, uh... The, the, the agents in the, in the network? Or is it just meant to be, like, wait for him to come back or find him somehow? Just wait for him to come back? Okay. Let's end our cycle. Because the, 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 the negative being on his thing in the workshop made me worry that, like, oh, the implication was that, um... When, when that timer finished, something bad was gonna happen to him and it would be too late to save him or whatever. Let's go talk to Ankita. Ankita is crouched in the computing core of the Ambergris, swearing to herself when you enter. She doesn't look up. These shits completely ruined the core's connectors when they cut it. She holds up a thick fistful of ragged wires. Ship mine they ripped won't even be usable without replacing these. Throws the bundle of wires across the room. <laughs> Amateurs. Can we repair it? There's nothing to repair. We need an entire ship mine. Not exactly the first thing you can expect to dredge up from a scrap freighter. She sighs. Fragments, maybe, sections of a mine, but a complete ship mine? No way. Ankita climbs out of the cooling well, where the ship mine should be. The space suddenly crowded with her on the same level as you, towering over you as she stoops beneath the low curved ceiling. Come on, it's gonna be done here now. Uh oh! Possible two things that we need ship mines for! I would like to help you, ma'am, but. <laughs> I think I have more pressing concerns, unfortunately. She leads you back through the guts of Amber. Though you could find the way back yourself. The repair process has left you familiar with the cutter's idiosyncratic layout. All diagnostic angles and bundled tubes. What do we do now? Ankita seems lost in thought. You focus on the corridors, ducking below conduits and passing through bulkheads. Eventually you arrive in the galley. Though it's hard to tell. Most of the benches and prep surfaces are covered from half stripped components and welded hull patches. Ankita shoves a box of filters to the floor and sits. There's no way around it. She starts out of nowhere. 
We need a new ship mine. Where from? Scrap freighter. Port exchange. Hell, find one in the overlooked bathroom. Doesn't matter where, just matters that we get one. She rubs her forehead. It seems I'm about to do something very stupid. But hey, I came here, didn't I? Why not make a run of it? She fixes you with a hard stare. Sleeper, you're all I've got. No crew, no friends. You're in. She looks uncomfortable. I appreciate the time you put in on Amber, and I'm sure she would too if she could. What I'm saying is, if you screw me on this, I will kill you. She leans over and hands you a stack of chips. A big stack of chips. You don't dare count them. Get me that ship line, sleeper. Don't make me regret this. Okay. <laughs> well. She's not giving us a choice, I suppose. <laughs> oh, dear. You won't. She sighs. Look, just get out of here before I change my mind. You slip out of the galley and head back towards the main lock. As you do, Amber growls and creaks like a caged animal. You reach a hand out to calm her. Time to find Ankita a ship mind. Somehow. Alright, well, we need to deliver a ship mind. Better make sure to deliver! Interesting. Let's... Up for a nice roll here. Nice! And hey, we got some cryo out of it! You shadow a shipbuilder who's impressed when you know how to double seal a hull plate. He slips you a tip at the end of the shift. If we can technically give her a ship mind that has her friend on it, I suppose we'll have to see. And this is gonna take time for them to come back. Our scrap freighter's here. We can buy some scrap. Don't particularly need any scrap right now, though. Let's go to the bar for a bit. Let's, uh... Let's take a couple shifts. Ah! Not so great a shift, that one. Well, we can always go for the big roll. There we go. As you start your shift, a crew of salvagers barge in, and the next few hours are a whirlwind, a chatter, and long pours. They tip well. We can certainly afford to get food if we need it, so... I suppose the risk of losing some energy isn't that bad. We need the money. And there we go. Good service. And we still got a six to spend on... something. Let's talk to Tala. The Jarol slides from the bottle into the lumpy recycled glass. A pale, grassy yellow one of the Overlook's warm lights. The spacer nods and takes the drink, bringing it up to their face in both hands like an offering bowl. This is the good stuff. The stuff Tala says is aged in wooden casks, stored in some closed-off part of the old station, among corroded wires and softly looping systems. Sometimes it's hard to tell if Tal is joking. Either way, you like pouring the stuff. It gets on your fingers, and if you rub them together, you can smell the mossy drink. Cut through with aniseed, or aniseed maybe, mushrooms, wood, as the alcohol evaporates. I've never known if that was pronounced aniseed or aniseed. You like those who order it too. The aged Jerole is kept beneath the bar, open to order only by those who know it's there like the quiet spacer sitting at the bar right now. Hmm. And I 
certainly don't want to bother them. Let's busy ourselves. You pull a rag from your overalls and wipe down the bar, the Jerole smell lifting, then disappearing into the stale station air. The overlook is quiet this cycle. The salvagers busy offloading. The regulars likely at the Ord Exchange or queuing for work at the Havenid shipyards. You are in the right mood for a quiet shift. Some cycles drag along, the overlook empty and claustrophobic, but this one has caught you just right. And in this moment, some kind of calm has descended as you tinker away at the bar, lining up the bottles as your thoughts expand to fill the space. Suddenly, you hear a heavy clunking at the door. It creaks open and a huge cylindrical metal tank tumbles through, slamming into the floor. <laughs> shit! Tala breezes in front of it, a whirl of hair and bright eyes. Shit, shit, shit! Tala? <sighs> Sleeper! She ducks behind the bar and comes over. Can you help me with this? You look at the metal tank suspiciously. How'd you get that up here? Tala puts a hand on her hip. Are you going to help me or what? You come around the bar and get to one side of the tank. Okay, says Tala. On my count. One, two, three. You both heave the tank up to standing. Somehow you hold it, or somehow. You hold it in place, struggling to keep it steady. Where's this going? In the back, comes a voice from behind- Oh, that's heard. In the back, comes a voice from behind the tank. Somehow, you manage to lug the huge thing into the back room, where you place it in one corner, dwarfing the rest of the contents of the small room. As you do, you hear a crunch. You stand back and look at the expired rations oozing out from under the tank. Oh, shit. Tala looks at you apologetically. I know you liked those. That's okay. <laughs> you push the crushed rations to one side. That's the end of that. Tala looks exhausted and rubs her shoulders. Francis, I swear to... Something up? Yes, she sighs. He was supposed to be back from Etienne's up in the Greenway by now. Back with our Jerol. She leans against the tank. It seems he's gone lost again. Or joined the Haifa commune. The what? We need that Jerol. There's four other bars near here, and the spacers sure as hell don't come to the Overlook for the ambiance. She, looked through the op she looks through the open door to check if anyone can hear her. She knocks on the hollow tank. So I'm taking matters into my own hands. She smiles. Welcome, sleeper, to the Overlook Distillery. You look around the dank room. Uh, need some work. She picks at some paint flaking from the metal walls. Well, I might need some help, though. She shrugs. You up for it? She knocks on the tank again. Could be fun. Happy to help. Okay! She grabs you by the shoulders. I'm excited! She turns around and looks at the tank. I reckon we chop this thing in half, one half for fermentation, the other we turn into a still. We'll also need to gather the ingredients. She turns back and looks at you. You look more like a chopper than a gatherer, she smiles. So how about you build the still and tub while I work on the rest? Oh, wait, sleeper, I have an idea. Paula's grinning now and is making you nervous. To make up for the rations, how about we put a kitchen in here, too? Will it fit? We'll make it work. She turns back to the tank. Oh, this is going to be great, she says to herself. You look at the dented tank in the bare room. At least she has vision. God, I love her. She's great. <laughs> Tala nudges you out of the back room and closes the door. As you go back to the bar, you hear the banging and thumping again. The spacer finishes up the drink and nods in your direction as they leave. You can't quite tell if it's a gesture of sympathy or good luck. So much for a quiet shift. New drive. Let's see. Uh, improve the overlook. 
Tala wants to build a distillery in the back room of the Overlook. And Tala is someone it is hard to say no to. That's true. Look at her. She's so cute. <laughs> I like her. Build the still. We need to cut Tala's tank down and turn it into a still and a fermentation tub. As well as setting up the room for distilling. It's a big job. We could maybe spend dice on that today. Before we do... Let's get some food. We need to get those Jarol caps. Still. Alright. I sure hope she doesn't ask me for a shipment! <laughs> those aren't exactly easy to come by right now! Let's see. Uh, no way to get one from here right now. But we've got two, and that's good. Alright, well, let's pay the toll. over the chits to the Yadagon Enforcer and he nods you through. I suppose we've now unlocked this place. Unit 207F, Low End Apartment Complex. You find the entrance to the apartment and its passkey symbol obscured beneath layers of graffiti. Who lives here? Suppose we ought to look. The lock clunks open, the metal door swinging inward into the dark. As you push the door open, the automatic lights flicker on inside the apartment. They reveal yellowing plastic panels, the curved shape of wall-mounted utility units, the detritus of a routine life arranged on every surface. You step inside, clicking the door shut behind. The amber light of the aging fixture glazes everything with a pale orange. The work surfaces hold a variety of objects, indistinct in the dull lighting. A pale blue light drifts from a doorway at the end of the room. Let's look around here first. Smudges through the thin layer of dust suggest a recent, rare, and hurried visit. They trace a path to the water dispenser, the auto wash into a cabinet still half open. On the shelf sits an empty pill case. Go to the doorway. You cross the cramped utility room with its auto wash, dispensers, water closet, towards the doorway. Through the doorway is a dark, warm room, lit only by the faint glow of a terminal screen. Let's have a look around. A bunk is touched to the wall, blankets ruffled. A wall desk glitters with rows of vials and containers. A briefcase lab sits open, loaded with rows of reagents and compounds you do not recognize. In comparison, this room is clean, ordered, controlled. Approach the terminal. As you approach, there is a crackle from somewhere in the dark. Sleeper. Sabine's voice shakily echoes through the apartment. Welcome to my home. I'm sorry I can't be there. I have had to make alternate arrangements. You hear rattling noises, static. I was able to record this message, but I don't dare to show my face. Something is happening within Yatagan. I no longer trust them. Their voice becomes distant, slipping behind the background noise. I have something to ask of you. I want you to get me out. Yadagon were supposed to hide me, to protect me. After everything happened, I was desperate. Then after that, I was too tired to care. A noise like waves over the recording. But I'm done with them now. I want out. Screw the debt. But I need insurance. Something I can hold against them. I have my suspicions, but I can't be sure. I need information. And as you know, you need me. A pause. Something clicking in the dark. This isn't a threat. You have to understand my position here. Another pause. I know, sleepers. I have been here before. I can help you. But not with Yatagon's noose around my neck. Get me data. Get me information. Get me something that I can use against Yatagon. Then I can get out and you can get what you need. 
Please. Waves of static cut into Sabine's voice. Bring it here, to my terminal. I'll get to it when I can. You look around the tiny room and try to imagine Sabine living here, looking at the desk, sleeping in the bunk, blinking into the terminal in the dark. Recording cuts to static, filling the room with its white hiss. Then, silence. Access the terminal. You sit in front of the humming terminal and hit a few keys. Sabine's left an access port open, but the rest is encrypted, locked away behind passcodes. It seems Sabine might not trust you as much as they want you to think. Who does Sabine need to hide from? What debt do they owe to Yatagon? You try to assemble the pieces, but too many are missing. The only thing you know is that without stabilizers, your body will die. You glance at the briefcase lab on the desk, its glassware glinting in the dark. You turn away and leave, the door clunking shut behind you. Back in the corridor, you notice the scrawled graffiti of a blade on the opposite wall. Yatagon. You feel yourself being drawn into something you don't quite understand. New drive discovered. Get Sabine out. Sabine is involved in something bad with Yatagon. They need your help to escape. They need data. Three. We've got one right now. With enough data on Yatagon's activities, Sabine might be able to bargain for her freedom. Well... Put those hacking skills to use. That's one. But while we're here, we got some places to see. Founder's Gap? The Free Smoke? Low End. What do we got here? We got block maintenance. Maintained by their residents, the ramshackle blocks are always in need of repairs. Helping out is a good way to make friends. Oh, that gives you energy. Oh. Interesting. You can come here for free. You can do some en some, some engineering, and if that goes well, they'll maybe give you like a bit of food because they, they're, 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 they're happy you're helping out or something. And we can play Talvla. The clack of filter caps can be heard in every concourse in the low end, as the residents play rotating rounds in this game for cryo. That would give us a uh, low end rip. No one knows why. No one knows you here. You'll need to change that if you want access to the low end's residents and facilities. Interesting. I wonder if Tavla is meant to be like Pogs, the Pogs of the future. Now we've got the smoke. We can enter the smoke. A tangled network of service passages and makeshift tunnels cut through the smoke as if it were a hive. There are no maps here. The smoke is layer after layer after layer of dense urban fabric. The only way to explore it is vertically. Or we can scale the smoke. Blistered with precarious elevators and stairways, the smoke can't be navigated from the outside. But the climb requires bravery. Good to know. And there's Founder's Gap. Gap in the ring station. Pay for passage. To reach the Greenway, you need to pay for a pass. A practice invented by the Spacers board here. They call it Founder's Ferry. I definitely can't afford that yet. I definitely can't afford that yet. So I think what we'll do is we will... This is danger, but we've got a big, huge roll on this, so I think we'll be good. I think we'll be good. Plus two smoke climber. Somehow... Deep in the smoke, you come across a thoroughfare lit by work lamps where groups pass back and forth with ease. That gives us the Midline Freight Hub, the Smoke Transit Center. 
steal a shipment? <laughs> With so many shipments, what's one diverted package? You would have no idea what you're stealing, but that's part of the fun, right? <laughs> we can steal! <laughs> or freight operator. Midline runs automated freight down from the free spoke. They need skilled operators. And you don't have to lift a single crate. Hmm. We can steal. That might give us another ship mine fragment. We might we might get the goods we need. <laughs> we might get the goods we need. <laughs> it's a consideration. It's a consideration. It's a consideration. <laughs> Interesting. Well, we have got to go to bed. Already committing space crime by existing? True, but also, does that necessarily mean that I want to get myself in more potential heat? This is cool music. Let's see. Anything immediate popping up for us to, to have a look see at? There doesn't seem to be a time limit for the shipbind core at the moment, which is good. That's good. We need another day to pay off that tab, or for the tab to appear, rather. And we can continue going back here. Uh, we don't need to um, like worry about that suddenly going back on us somehow. I was worried we would have to pay the 60 every time. Let's help out. Let's make friends. There we go. We got some energy for it. You refit the long broken fans of a family's air filters. They insist you join them for dinner. And the children are delighted by your presence. Oh! That's so sweet. Risk it again? Shall we risk it again? Some more engineering? Maybe we should have saved that three. Oh well. We did get a scrap though. You help an older resident to revive their terminal, but after hours of assembling and reassembling, you realize you've fried the CPU. Dang. Well, we did our best. some point soon, but I might want to get some more work done on getting rid of Hunter first before I dive deeper into that. Doesn't seem to be a time limit on it, at least. Let's build the still. Need to cut Talit's tank down and turn it into a still in a fermentation tub, as well as setting up the room for distilling. It's a big job. Tala comes to help you for a bit, chats to you about her plans for the Overlook. Second pair of hands makes the work go easier. I could spend that three on there as well. Or I could spend it trying to make some money. So we might need some money pretty soon. And this technically pays out better than work in the bar. And we can sell some scrap. Nineteen cryo, and let's sell the scrap. There we go. Make some good cryo on the components, which moments later are being assembled in front of you. Let's see. Let's see. Got anything else interesting we can slice into soon? We got that one keynote we never looked at. There's one Yadagon agent there. Personal terminal is empty apart from a single high-level encryption locked behind access protocols. Another Yatagon agent. That's 
all we can see so far. Very interesting. Hang on a second. Oh, wait, no, this is uh, further away. For a second I was thinking, oh my god, is it letting us hack into, uh, <laughs> hack into Sabine's terminal? No, 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 it doesn't seem to be. That's about all we can do for the day. So let's... Don't have a rest. Tomorrow seems like it's gonna be a big day. One way or another. We should probably wrap up soon, but I want to keep going. Fuck. That's hard. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And... How can someone drink this much in six cycles? Ethan hasn't held back while he's been the compressor. Alright, well... Let's get this paid off now, then. I can certainly afford it, thankfully. But after working at maximum those credits... As you hand over the chits, you hear Ethan laughing hysterically somewhere down the bar. <laughs> I can't believe you just did that. Ethan's mocking laugh comes from across the bar. <laughs> you look across to see him leaning across it in the pool of light, empty glasses and spilled liquids glinting around him. It's always dark in the compressor, but this cycle the place is packed. A load of spacers mixing with the locals. Usually they run. Ethan spins a glass on the bar. Or they go spend their savings on some local heavy I have to put down. They don't pay. Walk away. Ethan gets to his feet. The glass falls and smashes, but he doesn't seem to notice. You think that's it? One round of drinks and we're even. Sleeper. Come on. His hand comes to rest on the butt of his handgun, dangling from a chest holster. What's wrong with you? Ethan laughs hard, and the people around him turn to see what's happening. You think this is on me? I'd think someone in your position might have a better idea of how this all works. I'm a freelance sleeper, just like you. We both signed a contract with s and didn't we? The difference is that my word means something. He closes the gap, stumbling a little. What'd you think? You could just run away from your contract, your debt? You could just steal that natty little body of yours and take it for a joyride? Play human for a cycle or two? I'm nothing like you. That's what I'm saying! <laughs> Ethan is addressing the bar now, having noticed the attention of the other patrons. You are a coward. I'm a professional. No, I should thank you. Ethan nods, his head heavy, for giving me such an easy job. I'm used to outlaws, you know? Real bounties. If I knew catching sad little SKPs like you was so easy, I would have changed clients ages ago. Someone shouts from the back of the bar for Ethan, to sh for Ethan to shut up. He holds up a finger in that general direction without turning around. Dude's drunk. I don't want to egg him on. I'm scared of that. Hmm. Although... I'm kind of sick of this dude. Shoot me or leave. Shoot me or let me leave. Oh, ho, I see. Toughening up here. He gestures wildly at the crowd. Thumbs up or thumbs down, folks. Most turn their backs to their drinks. Or most turn back to their drinks, no longer interested in this tired show. Ethan mutters insults as he walks back towards the bar. Ethan sits heavily back down on his stool and searches through his glasses for one with something left in it. Thing is, sleeper, I can find you anywhere. It's actually wild that you haven't figured it out. That body isn't yours, and it will always betray you, no matter what. He 
finds a glass and downs the contents. So please, go. I'll catch up with you whenever I need another drink. <laughs> he laughs and taps the bar for a fresh drink. And fucking look at yourself. Give it up, sleeper. I'm done teaching you for today. He settles his head on the bar and closes his eyes. I'm sick of you. Go find a job. You turn on your heel and are out. Out of the cloying dark and the sweat stench of the compressor. You walk hard and fast down the walkway, anger driving your footfalls into the metal of the rim like hammers. Well, we did get an upgrade point for that. And then, uh... Four more cycles to wait on that. I think I would like to save up for an upgrade. I think I'd like to save up for an upgrade. Maybe you are a misandrist because if this character were a woman, you'd find her unbearably sexy. Okay, thanks for sharing that, I suppose. I would still think she was a fucking creep. <laughs> I'm gonna save these points and try and get, uh, one of these. Reroll all your dice sounds interesting. Uh, using scrap at home to repair condition also sounds interesting. And then agent nodes give double data rewards. If I do this, and that means I could have much, much cheaper repairs for my condition. I'm gonna have to spend hundreds on, uh, on, on, on stabilizers. Interesting. Interesting. Well, we've got a lot of good dice. Time to go talk to Harden! It's been more than a few cycles since Fang confronted Harden, and the silence since has been noticeable. In your time with Fang, you haven't exactly found him to be reliable, but... You did expect to hear the end of whatever plan he put into action. But... If he won't come to you, you think, as you approach the Havenage building, then it's time to come to him. After all, he did promise to fix your tracker, and you are getting nervous. As you approach the bay doors, you see them wide open, and light pouring out of the one star room. Stacks of servers and terminals sit outside the bay, suddenly robbed of their mystery by the bright flood lamps. A figure in Havenage security fatigue steps out of the bay as you get closer, carrying a stack of hardware. I gotta know. As you get closer, you see the security officer taping up machines from Fang's stash with what looks like hazard tape. This isn't good. This isn't good at all! So if he's a sleeper too, does that mean he's also a robot? Uh, I'm not sure who you mean by that, but as far as I know, like, we're the only actual sleeper, like, you know, in the story as of right now. Unless you were talking about, uh, bar dude, because he was talking in metaphors rather than, like, you know, literal stuff. He was like, oh yeah, we're, 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 we're both, you know, like, company property doing jobs for them, kind of thing. Also, thank you, GM and the Great Barrier, for that raid. Hope you had yourself a wonderful stream today. We're checking out some Citizen Sleeper. You again. Pardon is there, leaning beside the bay entrance so calmly that you barely noticed him. He has a slate in his hand, an inventory of seizures scrawled across it. Predictable. Further evidence of Feng's collusions. To see another security officer come out of the bay and take notice of you. Harden. Harden pushes away from the wall and comes closer. Don't worry, sleeper. We have all the evidence we need. A confession won't be necessary. He gestures around at the stack of hardware. Spying on fellow Havenage members, hoarding Solheim materials, an obsession with corporate data. 
It speaks for itself, does it not? That was his job. And what would you know about jobs, sleeper? He looks up at the glass roof above and the stars beyond. We are the ones that provide the oxygen you're breathing, the light you're seeing, the systems you use every day to live out your cycles. This place was fought for, sleeper. It took work, diplomacy, and strength to stop the eye, descending into chaos after Solheim collapsed. Not blind conviction or self-interest. Hang isn't selfish. I know all about the background of our mutual friend, Sleeper. Don't you worry about that. His parents would be sickened by the damage he's trying to do to the institution they helped found. You see, Sleeper, we are proud of our history here. Andre Erlin and the First Union founded this place, and the Havenage has well- Or I guess Havenage, now that I think about it, because it's supposed to be like, you know, they're making a haven. And the Havenage has welded his values into the very walls of this place. We will never turn away the hard-working, the just, the true citizens of the Eye. Havenage aren't a gang like Yatagon. We aren't pirates like half of the spacers you'll meet in the hub, or esoteric like those Haifa radicals in the Greenway. We are the backbone of this place, proud and true. We named Erlen's Eye Sleeper. This is our station. He meets your eye. So please, take your false accusations elsewhere before I decide I need that confession after all. History will catch up to you. I'm not afraid of history, sleeper. We are making it here, cycle by cycle. He smiles. If you have any pride, you'll give up Feng the moment he contacts you. You know where to find me. With that, Harden turns his back and walks back towards the security officers, ordering them to continue the clear out. As they do, something catches your eye among one of the server stacks. A crumpled, hand-printed box of synthetic chewing gum. A penguin character grinning from the brightly colored card. And scrawled onto it, a speech bubble reading, Take me to Tambor. Take it. You carefully pocket the box, making sure no one is watching, and then turn away just as another stack of servers is wheeled out of the bay. What have you done, Feng? Where the hell is Tambor? Very interesting. Also interesting that this game is maybe giving me the option to narc on this dude. I'm not gonna fucking do it, but... <laughs> Certainly interesting. noodles from the seaweed. He doesn't pay much, but he'll feed anyone who does a shift. That's another way we can get energy, okay, but that's for endurance, which we don't really have a lot of. Or express delivery. Delivering noodles to the nameless units of the low end takes guts and a certain fearlessness when it comes to asking for tips. That's an engaged way to get uh, some money, which is neat. Probably not going to end up doing that much myself. I kind of want some noodles. Let's uh, do a bit of repair work here, get some energy back. There we go. 
You join a gang of residents trying to repair the tangled innards of an elevator motor and manage to spot the problem. A burnt out resistor. Here's hoping for a big one. There we go. We get some energy. We got to have dinner with some nice folks again. And hey, the temp. The Tambor Tea House. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. According to it, we can go to the Tavla Room. The Tavla Room in the Tambor Houses, some of the best players in Low End. This is serious, high stakes only play. We're making bank today. We're making bank today, we are. Yeah! You hit a stride of good games, amassing a solid stack of chits. On your final game, a decisive defeat. The other player applauds. Hand in gum box. I feel stupid doing this, but the penguin says take me to tambour. And this is the only tambour you can find. They nerfed the hell out of the tambour room. It used to be 36? That's so much! Yeah, I guess I can't blame them for that, huh? That's a lot of money! <laughs> Alright, let's start this. The waitress looks at you with suspicion as you hand over the box. Is this the right place? As you go to leave the Tambor Tea House, a hand falls on your shoulder. Oh, I like his little poncho! Sleeper! Feng hisses from behind you. How'd you find me? Harden has your hardware. I don't worry about that. Feng smiles. He has no idea what to do with it. <laughs> Feng guides you down a set of stairs to one of the Tambor's lower levels. The tea house is stacked with curved mezzanines, all connected excuse me, by a central atrium. The levels are filled with makeshift booths and bars, and conversation bounces busily off the metal walls. Feng sees you look around. This place used to be a fuel tanker's main drum, hence the name. The tea house part is a bit of a misnomer, though. You can get anything the eye offers from this place, but real tea isn't exactly readily available. He picks a booth, itself fashioned from some old salvage tank or container, then lined with spongy insulation foam, and collapses into it. He looks around furtively. Don't suppose you've seen any Havenage types? They don't usually come out this far. Only you. <laughs> Not anymore, I'm afraid. Suspended without appeal. Turns out Harden has someone's ear. He grins. Doesn't bother me, though. Shows we hit a nerve back there. He picks a scrappy hand scrawled menu from the table and tosses it over. What are you drinking? What's the plan? Plan, plan, plan. He waves his hand. Let's order first. Fang's right. The menu's ridiculous. There's at least ten different infusions, most of which you can't make out, but the paper's dominated by an extensive complement of esoteric alcohols and cocktails. Black tea is listed, without a price, as a seasonal specialty. So you ran into Harden. Was he pissed? Feng doesn't wait for an answer. That snake is so self-righteous, he might actually believe that Erlen would approve of his meritocratic bullshit. He taps on the table. If Havenage was like it should be, like it was founded to be, they would have shouted him down at any council meetings he dared to mention true citizens. He sighs. But I guess his kind run the place now. A young woman with a vine tattoo sneaking up her arm turns up at the booth, a slate in hand. Your order? You skim the menu, your eyes glazing over. Time to pick something. Are we feeling adventurous? Or do we go for something we know we're going to like? Hmm. 
people seem to be saying kelp. I guess we're going for the kelp infusion. Let's get the kelp infusion. She nods and notes it. And you, she begins looking to Fang, but when she sees him, she suddenly stops. What the? Fang shrieks, Fang shrieks a little. You are supposed to be working. This is your shift. He grins sheepishly. You work here? Feng waves to you to be quiet. Look, Jenna, let's just say this is my break. My friend here has been through a lot. Jenna looks between the two of you. Um. <laughs> um. I don't want to do the cough. That's a little too dismissive. I guess we can wave. Feng doesn't look pleased. Two minutes, says Jenna, pointing at Fang, and only because I don't want to get dragged into whatever this is. She gestures at the table and walks off. What? Fang stretches in the booth. You know how it is. We all have to eat. Plus, he leans in. This is the best place around here to find a person you might be looking for. Who? Remember that web of connections that Harden pinged the moment we confronted him? Those are his collaborators. And if we want to understand what a Solheim executive might be getting up to on the eye, those are the people we have to find. Feng's almost whispering now. There's a couple of them I suspect are in the low end. Well, almost everyone in the low end comes through this place at one time or another. He brings a modified slate out onto the table. I've set this up so that anyone with the network signature I'm looking for comes into close proximity. It'll mark them. Once they're marked, we can break through their access protocols and get out the good stuff inside. We just have to find them first. Hence me moonlighting as a waiter. Suddenly a smile grows across his face. Wait. I have an idea. What? Look, I can't cover enough of the low end on my own. So far, I've had no matches in this place. With two of us, we can cover more ground. How? Well... Feng has a hang a hangdog look. We need to get you out and about in the low end, in close proximity to as many people and residences as possible. And it turns out my friend Min Ji needs some help with deliveries. As in Min Ji Express? So you already know him! Perfect. Feng places a tiny receiver on the table. This connects to my slate, runs the same marking protocol if you get near any of our targets. So all you have to do is take some delivery shifts for old Min Ji, and soon enough we'll have the place covered. Feng? <sighs> Don't give me that. You think I like working here? And I thought you could use the tips. He grins. Where we are in this together, right? <sighs> right. <laughs> okay, then. Feng slips his slate back under his clothes. Just head on up to Minji Express, take a livery shift, and we'll see what, shank what shakes up. You manage to find anyone and extract any data? Bring it right down here to me. They have me on double shift, so I shouldn't be hard to find. Jenna walks past, carrying a tray of drinks, and sharply catches Feng's eye. I don't think she's bringing you a drink. He stands. I think it's time we call this meeting to a close. You grab the receiver from the table and slip it into a pocket. See you soon, sleeper. Stay safe. Fang adds before turning and walking off towards the bar, whistling as he does. New drive discovered. Harden's network. Fang wants to use Harden's associates to find proof of his past and present crimes. Well, I guess we're making a delivery. We got no points in engage, but a four is a pretty good roll. We'll probably get some cryo out of it. Fang wants you to take these delivery shifts so you can locate and hack his targets. The tips are a small but welcome bonus. Nine cryo. Somehow you find all the units you're supposed to be delivering to, but no 
not without cutting back on yourself multiple times. Interesting. We ought to get a bit of food. There we go. It's gonna be a while before we can get into uh, the green zone, so it's gonna be a little bit before we can get that, that that upgraded special food there, I reckon. get a whole bunch of different webs and like, you know, people living their own lives and doing their own things around here. And it's, it's interesting to see how some of these are gonna, you know, interconnect with one another. Hmm. Right, your tab's starting to build up. Probably go to bed soon yourself. Hell, I should probably go to bed soon myself. It is 11.22. I've been going for five hours and some change. But this is fucking good. This is fun. This is really cool. <laughs> there's more than just the big story sweeps and politics. Right, yeah, there's people just living here. It's cool. But we're gonna have to do at least a little bit on this here got a 75% chance of at least some kind of success. Here goes some energy. Oh well. You get lost in the maze of passages and somehow come back exhausted without delivering all your orders. Min G is furious. Now yeah, we're not rolling super good on that one, so we're maybe just gonna have to wait till we get some big rolls. Save them for then. Let's... Try and get a little bit more low ender here. Now this would give us a ton of rep, but this would give us energy. The energy is kind of what I want right now. No energy, but we did get a random scrap item. That's nice. Alright, new drive discovered. Build a home? Oh! Derelict unit! Gather materials. This half-built unit looks long forgotten, a project that never made it. With enough scrap, you might be able to seal it up. Might be nice not living in a, a shipping container anymore to a guy that doesn't want to see us ever again. Or from a guy, rather. They tuck the scrap into the shattered interior. It's hard to imagine this place is a home, but it can't be worse than a container. Interesting. Let's... Go work a little bit of a bar shift. Got to make some money. Uh, that's a not so great of a roll. Let's see. I do this though. That gets bumped up, and that improves this. So let's go for this here, and then I'll put the one on the bar shift. Hey, plus two. Do need to get a little bit more money here, or. to start getting uh, Yadagon agent stuff. Oh, but this is gonna bump up uh, our, our, our being noticed by the, by the fiend. But I do need it, and it does give Cryo. It's Yadagon data. Let's go put that in here. That's two of three. Pretty good. Nice. I'll just have to find another one soon. 
We are very hungry, so we ought to get food. Thank you, Emphis. Thank you, as always, for a delicious meal. And maybe this is a good place to call it for the night. We can, uh, have our nap and then keep on a going next time I stream this. That sounds good to me. It's almost 11.30 at night. I wasn't even planning on going this long, but then this game just fucking got me in a chokehold in a good way. Let's see what our rolls are going to be for next time. We got a five, we got a three, a two, and a two. That is not bad. Not bad at all. Lots of choices for next time we play. But we can think about what we'll do next time. When next time comes. Last autosave 21 seconds ago. that. That's going to be Citizen Sleeper for the night. I am now very deeply excited to delve into more of this game <laughs> sometime soon. <laughs> uh, hopefully next week. Hopefully next week. Next week might be a little bit jam-packed, busy type of week, but uh, I certainly want to play more of this game. That's going to do it for now. Let's see. Uh, we got any fan art to take a peek at. We do have some. It's, uh, Get a bit of music on. Someone mentioned earlier it's on Game Pass. Right, it's on Game Pass. It's on uh, Steam. Uh, it's on the Switch. I believe it's also on the Xbox as well. It might be on, um, on Itch, maybe? I'm not sure. You are... Uh, definitely not lacking for choice if you're interested in this video game. Plenty of places you can go to uh, to give that a peek and give that a play. Let's get some music rolling. Sure, let's go with that. A little bit upbeat and peppy considering what tonight's stream was, but hey, I can't object to that too much. Starting off with this bit of fan art from Borden. <laughs> from the start of the stream. <laughs> Just instantly getting cranked before I can make my joke. <laughs> They've got a website for the game too with a link to where to get it on each platform. Right, and that's what I link to in the in the game command. And also, Nightbot was very slow on timing you out for that, but, uh... Yeah, I, I tend to pull that up for, like, any video game I play. I look for, like, the official website that I can link to. Anyways, this is, this is real cute. I like the... The boxy shapes in this, it's very cool. Hell yeah. I don't know, I'm a, I'm a broad-shouldered gal. It, it, it's nice to see a cute little pic that kind of feels that way with all the funny square shapes. You love to see it. Very cool. Thank you very much. We have this one here from Ooh Possum, who says, Holly, but as the bull squid from one of my favorite gifts. <laughs> what the hell is this picture? That's great! <laughs> I have never fucking seen this before. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, very cute. I was about to say, I don't think I've ever really seen a cute bull squid before, but who am I fucking kidding? Bull squids are cute. Thank 
you very much. This is adorable. Got this one here from Lightbulb. He says, Citizen Sleeper has such a fun art style, I must draw. And I do believe the one right below is like a fully colored in shaded version? Holy fuck! Yo! <laughs> This is fucking phenomenal! My god! <laughs> huge, huge fan of this. I love the sort of, like, interpreting of the, the hair as being the sort of, like... It looks almost like harder metallic substance. And that's real cool for, like, a... For, like, an android type of thing. Also, I like the way you did the, the little drone... Our little drone buddy. The, the little drone doesn't actually, like feel relevant gameplay wise but i just really like knowing that it's there and i'm glad you included it <laughs> this is fucking killer holy shit thank you so much i adore this one uh, i will double check real quick uh to see if there's any that's a monkey i will double check real quick to see if there's any on uh twitter we do have some we do have some. Uh, give me just a moment. Uh, let me just pull these open. Uh, just double check to see if there's others. All right, here we go. Uh, let me just pull open our browser view. We got these ones here from Rumrusher. Uh, first one. <laughs> Their interpretations of our protag. <laughs> Funny little shroom hat. Fuck yeah. Very cute. Very cute. And another one from Rum. Which I guess is very fitting right now. <laughs> All things considered. Fun little coincidence that. Very cute. Thank you very much. It is always a treat to see your art. I do believe uh, that will do it for our fan art showcase for tonight. Thank y'all very much uh, for all the wonderful art. It always does make me real happy to see. Always makes my heart feel warm that folks would take time out of their day to uh, draw a thing and share it with me. Man, this game's fucking awesome. I'm very excited to play more next week. I am very excited. I should be able to do more next week at least. I'm gonna do my damnedest to fit it in at the very least. <laughs> Who's live right now that we can raid? Who? is live right now. I think Sophie might be live? I think Sophie's live. Let's go chuck folks over on at Sophie, uh, who I believe is playing... <laughs> Rust? <laughs> Y'all want to watch some freaking Rust? Let's go do it. Let's do it. I can't think of a raid phrase. Uh... I'm not so much good at the whole raid phrase thing. I just like, you know, tossing folks on over that way. There ain't gotta be a song and dance for it. You can just tune on in and have a good time. But you can't tune in and stay here because that's the wrong song. <laughs> just gotcha. <laughs> Mostly got myself, but that is going to be it for our stream tonight. Uh, I went into this game expecting a fun couple of hours. And I am getting out of this game hours later, uh, hungry for more. <laughs> I am very, very excited uh, to dive into more of this game next week. And I'm very excited to get to share it with you all. Hope y'all had a good time tonight. Thank y'all very much for tuning in. Uh, thank y'all for all the support tonight. All the subs, all the tips, all the bits. Uh, your generosity means a whole hell of a lot to me. I know I talked about it a little bit earlier uh, on Twitter today, but uh, it means a lot that uh, people want to come through and, you know, support uh, 
my 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 openly gay and transgender ass. <laughs> so thanks for making this community what it is, because it wouldn't be what it is without any of you. Thank you for all the raids and the hosts we had tonight. Uh, thank you for all the follows we had. Thank you to any new viewers who stopped on by. Uh, thank you again for all the wonderful fan art we got to see. And thank y'all very much for tuning in. You know, whether you caught the entire stream or you just stepped in for just a bit, whether you only hopped in at the start or you're just making it right now at the end, uh, whether you've been, you know, chatting it up or you've been keeping to yourself, having fun that way, whether you're watching this live or checking out the VOD, no matter when, where, or how you tune into the streams, it is always, always a delight to have you all here. So thank you all for taking time out of your busy day to spend it here with us. We're gonna raid my friend Sophie, baby. We've played some Rust. And I saw someone bring up uh, a fun idea for a, a raid message, which was just positive outcome. So I think we ought to go with that. <laughs> Raid message of positive outcome. <laughs> if you're sticking around for the raid, I hope you have yourself a wonderful time over at Sophie's stream. Be good. Be good to each other. Be good to her. Show her the same respect you've shown me tonight. And I hope you have a good time watching her stream. I'll be live again tomorrow with a, kind of a bonus stream way earlier in the day. Uh, probably around noon-ish my time. Uh, and I want to play some puzzle games, so we're going to do a little bit of invento. That's gonna be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. I'll also be live again around my normal time on Friday. And we'll be checking out some Hard Space Shipbreaker. Maybe I'll see you then? Or maybe I'll see you around some other time, but no matter what happens, before we head off, I'd just like to say have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank y'all very much for tuning in. Make sure you're taking care of yourself, taking care of the folks around you. I hope you're having a happy first day of Pride. And I hope to see you again soon.